All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our live script readings for the charities that we choose. And we're starting out tonight by doing the seminal 1993-94 classic Clerks uh, by Kevin Smith to raise money for sex positive STL tonight. We'll learn a little bit more about them uh, when we come back from our act break in act two. But I wanna bring on our people tonight. Our cast are not ready for quarantine players. So we're gonna take you back to uh, Leonardo, New Jersey in the 90s. So let's start with Don with uh, Dante Hicks. He's not even supposed to be here today. That's Mr. Patrick McMahon. Hello. All right. We have we have the scourge of the video rental of RSD video, Randall Gr Randall Grace, played by Nick Nicholas Adler. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, we have the drug dealing, singing, dancing Jay, played by Ginger Fahrenheit. What's up, bitches? We have we have their hetero life mate. Silent Bob, played by Mona Chase, will also be narrating for us tonight. <laughs> oh, Y'all can't see it because because uh, like the audio picks up and switches our thing, but Mona is literally just like fully. No way. Once, Mona is silent. Fully committing to character. <laughs> uh, we have we have uh, Dante's girlfriend, the wonderful Veronica, played by Samantha Madison. I brought lasagna. <laughs> yes. Well yeah. done. <laughs> we have, have props ready. I, 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 I'm, I'm living for this already. We have the other person in in uh, Dante's life, Caitlin Bree, played by Kelsey Davis, who's just going to get to sit to lack two, basically. Right. <laughs> Hi, I'm here. So uh, I'm playing a multitude of customers, but also joining me so I don't sound totally schizophrenic is Dapper Daddio playing the other customers. Hey, um, can I get a pack of cigarettes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, you're dr if you're drinking while watching us tonight, let's just make that the official drinking game. How many times do you hear a pack of cigarettes? You're going to be blazed by the end of this. So I'm going to die because I have to do the lines at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> So you'll be uh, as blazed as cadavers earrings. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, let's let's just draw a little attention to those earrings because those earrings are amazing. Yes, of course. Trend alert earrings. Trend alert in Ooh, yeah. So be before I get us going by having Mona start us, uh, just a couple things to note that I've been asked to say. This script was written in the early 90s, and as such, there's a little bit of outdated dialogue. If my act, if the actors will be adapting and changing it for current times, that's fine. But just know that that's what it was. We don't endorse it, obviously, but that's what it is. And without further ado, Mona, take us away. All right, Clerks by Kevin Smith. <clears throat> we begin. Interior, bedroom, early morning hours. A dog sleeps on a neatly made bed. A clock reads 20 to 6. A shelf of books holds such classics as Dante's Inferno, Good, uh, Beyond Good and Evil, The Catcher in the Rye, and The Dark Knight Returns. A framed <laughs> diploma, dusty and unkempt, hangs askew on the wall. A snapshot of a girl is stuck. We're already laughing. Come on, y'all. <laughs> a, a phone sits quietly atop a bundle of laundry. It suddenly explodes with a resounding ring once, twice, three times. A closet door swings open and a half-clad figure fills out. Door swings open and a half the phone rings yet again and a hand falls upon the receiver, yanking it off the trash can. OC, the rumpled figure, uh, lays with his hand back on the camera, phone in hand. Pat, Pat. Me. Pat. Hello? Pat. What? No, Hello? I don't work today. I'm playing hockey at two. The dog yawns and shakes its head. Why don't you call Randall? Because I'm fucking tired. I just called last night. Last night. Jesus, what time are you going to come in? 12? You better be there at 12. Swear? 
A picture of a girl oh. leans against a trophy. The girl. picture is decorated Where? with a Play-Doh beard a and picture mustache. Of a girl. The picture is decorated with Dante. Next time, I get the bed. Cool. The phone receiver cool. slams on the cradle. A rumpled figure slowly sits up and remains motionless. He uses his hair and stands. The dog stands and wags its tail. A uh, uh, hand pats the head. The rumpled figure lays down on the bed, and we now see his face. It's Dante. This is in Dante's room. This is Dante's life. Dante grabs the dog and wrestles it. He releases the dog and sits up. Shit. He releases Cut to yeah. the interior, bathroom. A few minutes later, a steaming shower fills the room. The dog licks water from the toilet. Cut to the interior of the kitchen. Minutes later. A towel-dressed Dante opens the fridge and peers inside. He grabs a half-empty gallon of milk and closes the door. Cut to the interior of the kitchen. Seconds later, chocolate milk is mixed, uh, is heaped into a tumbler. One scoop, two scoops, three scoops, four scoops. Cut to the interior of the bedroom. A minute later, Dante gulps his breakfast while feeding, while feeling inside the closet for some clothes. Some chocolate milk spills on the floor. The dog laps the small puddle of chocolate milk. Cut to the interior hallway. Minutes later, Dante's feet hastily covered. Uh, hands grab keys from the top of VCR. Cut to the driveway. A car backs out of the driveway and speeds down the street. Cut to the exterior of the convenience store. It's morning. A car pulls up with a screech. Feet descend to the ground from the open door. Keys jam into the lock and pop it open. Dante lifts the metal shutter, revealing the door. He opens it and grabs two bundles of paper, throwing them inside the store. Cut to the interior of the convenience store, morning. A very dark room, barely lit by the daylight. Suddenly, lights flick on, revealing the glorious interior of the convenience store. The cat looks at Dante as he passes the camera quickly. The paper bundle is snapped open and with a knife. Newspapers slam into the appropriate racks. One rack remains empty. A coffee filter is placed in a metal pot. Ground coffee follows, and the mix is shoved into place in the coffee maker. The switch is flicked, and the machine comes to life. The newspaper, the empty newspaper rack, with the heading Asbury Park Press, seems out of place among all of the other stacks of papers. Dante rubs his chin and stares, puzzled. He rolls his eyes as it occurs to him. Shit. The register pops open and a hand extracts the quarter. Cut to the exterior of the convenience store, morning. Point of view of the newspaper machine. Through murky glass, oh no, page turn. Uh, through murky glass, the thin metal grating, we see Dante approach. He stops and drops a quarter in the slot. He pulls down the door, finally allowing us a clear view as he reaches towards the camera. Dante pulls a stack of newspapers from the Asbury Park Press vending machine. He struggles to hold them all in one hand as he lets the door slam. He turns to walk away, but the sound of the quarter dropping into the change slot stops him. He takes a step back to grab the coin. Cut to interior of the convenience store, morning. The papers drop into the once empty rack with a resounding flop. The quarter drops back into the register drawer. Cut to the convenience store in exterior, morning. Dante tries to jam the key into the window shutter lock. He looks down at it. Shit. The lock is gummed up with gum or something hard and obtrusive like gum, preventing the key from being inserted. Dante looks around, kicks the shutters angrily. The car trunk pops open and a hand reaches inside, pulling out a folded white sheet. Cut to the interior convenience store, morning. A can of shoe polish is grabbed from the shelf. Dante dips his finger into the shoe polish and writes in large lettered on the unfurled sheet, leaning onto the cooler. Cut to the exterior of the convenience store. Morning. Dante stands on a garbage can and tucks the corner of the sheet under the awning. Jumps down. Uh, pan out the banner reads, I assure you, we're open. The door sign shifts from closed to open. Cut to the interior of the convenience store. Morning. Clock reads 6.20. Dante leans behind the counter, the morning routine completed. He stares ahead, catatonic, then drops his head into his hands. The day has begun. Exterior of the convenience store, day. The store, with its makeshift banner looking in the dim morning hour just after dawn as cars drive by. 
Interior of the convenience store, day. Dante awaits on a customer, activist, buying coffee. Thanks, have a good one. Do you mind if I drink this here? Sure, go ahead. The activist leans on the briefcase and drinks his coffee. Another customer leans on the door. Are you open? Yeah. Pack of cigarettes. Are you sure? Am I sure? Are you sure? Am I sure about what? Do you really want to buy those cigarettes? Are you serious? How long have you been smoking? What is this, a pole? Beats me. How long have you been a smoker? Since I was 13. Oh, the activist lifts his briefcase <laughs> on the counter. He opens it and extracts his uh, sickly looking lung model. Also, Ginger totally forgot to highlight that part. <laughs> just that way I, we, told, we told you it would happen. <laughs> okay. I'd say you're about 1920, am I right? What the hell is this? That's your lung. By this time, your lung looks like this. You're shitting me. You think I'm shitting you? The activist hands him something from a briefcase. What's this? It's a trach ring. It's what they install in your throat when throat cancer takes your voice box. This one came out of a 60 year old man. Ugh. <laughs> he smoked until the day he died. He used to put the cigarette in this thing and smoke it that way. Excuse me, but... This is where you're headed. A cruddy lung smoking through a hole in your throat. Do you really want that? Well, if it's already too late. It's never too late. Give those cigarettes back now and try some and buy some gum instead. Here, Chuli's gum. Try this. It's not the same. Cheaper than cigarettes, and it beats it certainly beats this. Hands him a picture. Jesus. It's a picture of a cancer-ridden lung. Keep it. I'll just take the gum. 55. You made a wise choice. Keep up the good work. Customer exits. Maybe you should take that coffee outside. No, I think I'll drink it in here. Thanks. If you're going to drink it in here, I'd appreciate it if you'd not bother the customers. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Another customer comes up to the counter. Pack of cigarettes? What's that? This? How long have you been smoking? Cut to the exterior of the convenience store during the day. A blank wall. Jay steps into the frame, followed by Silent Bob. Jay pulls off his coat and swings into the arms of Silent Bob. Jay then throws down with a makeshift slam dance, spinning his arms and fake hitting Silent Bob. We need some tits and ass! Yeah! Silent Bob lights a smoke. I feel good today, Silent Bob. We're gonna make some money, and then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna go to that party and get some pussy. I'm gonna fuck this bitch, that bitch. I'll fuck anything that moves. Silent Bob points to something off screen. What are you looking at? I'll kick your fucking ass. Does that motherfucker still owe me 10 bucks? Silent Bob nods. Tonight, you and me are going to go off that fucker's head and take out his fucking soul. Remind me if he tries to buy something from us to cut it with leaves and twigs or fucking shit in that motherfucker's bag. Some girl walks past. Jay smiles at them. What up, sluts? Damn, Silent Bob, you're one rude motherfucker, but you're cute as hell. I want to <laughs> go down on you and suckle you. And then I want to go up there. Up three line, uh, uh, and then I want to line up <laughs> four guys and make a circus seal. <laughs> Jay, Jay makes low job faces down an imaginary line of guys looking quite like a performing seal. He throws a little humming sound between each nod and then hops up quickly. Ew, you fucking gay boy. Fucking hate guys. I love women. Nah. <laughs> a guy comes up to them. He's selling. I got hits, hash, weed, and later on we'll have some shrooms. We take cash or stolen MasterCard and Visa. Cut to the interior of the convenience store, daytime. A small crowd gathers around the activist as he orates. It's become something of a rally. You're spending what, $20, $30 a week on cigarettes? 40. 53. 53. <laughs> $53. Would you pay someone that money, that much money each week to kill you? Because that's what you're doing now by paying for the so-called privilege to smoke. We all gotta go sometime. It's that kind of mentality that allows this cancer-producing industry to thrive. Of course we're all gonna die someday, but do we have to pay for it? 
Do we have to actually throw hard earned dollars on a counter and say, please, please, Mr. Merchant of Death, sir, please sell me something that will give me bad breath, stink up my clothes and fry my lungs? It's not that easy to quit. Of course it's not. Not when you have people like this mindless cretin so happy and willing to sell your nails for your coffin. Hey now, wait a sec. Now he's gonna launch into his rap about how he's just doing his job, following orders. Friends, let me tell you about a, another bunch of hate mongers that were just following orders. They were called Nazis and, and they practically wiped a nation for, of people from the earth, just like cigarettes are doing now. Cigarette smoking is the new Holocaust, oh shit. And those that <laughs> practice of smoking or sell the wares that promote it are the Nazis of the 90s. He doesn't care how many people die from it. He smiles as you pay for your cancer sticks and, say, ha, and says, have a nice day. I think you'd better leave now. You want me to leave? Why? Because someone is telling it like it is? Someone's giving these fine people a wake-up call? You're loitering in here, and you're causing a disturbance. Sure, the disturbance, pal. And here, I'm buying some. What's this? Chili's gum. There, I'm no longer loitering. I'm a customer. A customer engaged in a discussion with other customers. Yeah, no, shut up so he can speak. Oh, he's scared now. He sees the threat we present. He smells the changes coming and the loss of sales when non-smokers finally demand satisfaction. We demand the right to breathe clean air. Yeah! We'd rather chew our gum than embrace slow death. Let's abolish this heinous practice of sucking poison, and if it means rumpling the feathers of a convenience store idiot, then so be it. That's it. Everybody out. <laughs> We're not moving. We have a constitutional right to assemble and be heard. Yeah, but not in here. What better place than this? To stamp it out, you gotta start at the source. Like I'm responsible for all the smokers. The ones in this town, yes. You encourage their growth, their habit. You're the source in this area and we're gonna shut you down for good. For good, cancer merchant! Yeah, cancer merchant! <laughs> cancer merchant! Cancer merchant! <laughs> Veronica enters and surveys the mess. The crowd throws cigarettes at Dante, pelting him in the face. Suddenly, a loud blast is heard, and white powder explodes over the throng. Everyone turns to face Veronica as she stands in one of the freezer cases holding a fire extinguisher. Oh my god! Who's leading this mob? The crowd looks among themselves. Someone points off camera. That guy. The activist carries his briefcase surreptitiously toward the door. Veronica from off camera. Freeze! Veronica jumps off the freezer case, training the nozzle of the extinguisher on the activist. Let's see some credentials. He reaches into the briefcase. She pokes the extinguisher nozzle at him, warningly. Slowly. <laughs> I love the bottle. Sorry, I just looked up. <laughs> uh, he pulls out a business card and hands it to her. She reads it. You're a Chuli's gum representative? He nods. And you're stirring up all this anti-smoking sentiment to what? Sell more gum? He nods again. Get out of here. He quickly flees. She blasts him with more chemical as he exits. <laughs> and you people, don't you have jobs to go to? Get out of here and go commute. The crowd sheepishly exits, one by one, offering apologetic glances. Dante tries to regain his composure. Veronica yes. waits for oh. the crowd to disperse, disgusted. I'm sorry, I jumped your line, sorry. It's you fine. You want to be ashamed of yourselves. Easily led automatons. Try thinking for yourself before you pelt an innocent man with cigarettes. I'm just the narrator, don't worry about me. <laughs> the rest of the crowd exits. Veronica sets the fire extinguisher down next to Dante. Dante sitting on the floor, head into folded arm. It looks like Tiananmen Square in here for a second. Dante silent. Thank you, Veronica. You saved me from extremely ugly mob scene. Dante remains silent. Veronica sits next to him. Okay, champ, what's wrong? Dante lifts his head and shoots her a disgusted look. All right, stupid question, but don't you think you're taking this a bit too hard? Too hard? I don't have enough ingredient indignities in my life that people start throwing cigarettes at me. At least they weren't lit. I hate this fucking place. Then quit. You should be going to school anyway. Please, Veronica. The last thing I need is a lecture at this point. All I'm saying is that if you're unhappy, you should leave. I'm not even supposed to be here today. I know. I stopped by your... Wait. Blah, blah. I stopped by your house and your mom said you left at like six or something. 
the guy got sick and couldn't come in. Don't you have a hockey game at two? Yes, and I'm going to play like, like shit because I didn't get a good night's sleep. Why did you agree to come in then? I'm only here until 12, then I'm gone. The boss is coming in. Why don't you open the shutters and get some sunlight in here? Somebody jammed the locks with gum. You're kidding. Bunch of savages in this town. You looked bushed. What time did you get to bed? I don't know, like 2.30, 3. What were you doing up so late? Huh? Nothing. What were you doing? Nothing. Jesus Christ. I got to fight with you now? Who's fighting? Why are you so defensive? Who's defensive? Just, would you just hug me? All right? Your boyfriend was just accosted by an angry mob, and he needs to be hugged. She stares at him. What? What is that? She called you, didn't she? Oh, be real. Would you, would you please hug me? I just went through a very traumatic experience and I haven't been having the best day so far. Now, come on. She stares at him again. What? What's with that look? I wasn't talking to anyone, especially her. Look at you, being all sort of, I don't know, standoffish. Veronica looks away. Fine. You don't trust me. Don't hug me. I see how it is. All right, pissy pants. You just go on being suspicious and quiet. I don't want to even hug you at this point. Veronica looks back at him. Give you a dollar. Cut to the interior of the convenience store. A note on the counter next to a small pile of money reads, please leave money on the counter. Take change when applicable. Be honest. Dante and Veronica are slumped on the floor behind the counter. Veronica holds Dante in her arms, his head on her chest. Change is heard hitting the counter. Thanks. The door is heard opening and closing and a customer leaving. How much money did you leave up there? Like $3 and mixed change and a couple of singles. People only get the paper and a cup of coffee this time of morning. You're trusting. Why do you say that? How do you know they're taking the right amount of change or even paying for what they take? Theoretically, people see money on the counter and nobody around, they think they're being watched. Honesty through paranoia. Why do you smell like shoe polish? I had to use shoe polish to make that sign. The smell won't come off. Do you think anyone can see us down here? Why, you wanna have sex or something? Ooh, can we? Really? I was kidding. Yeah, right. You can't get enough of me. Typically male point of view. How do you figure? You show some bedroom proficiency and you think you're gods. What about we do, what about what we do for you? Women? Women as lovers are all just basically the same. They just have to be there. Be there? Making a male climax is not a challenge, not all that challenging. Insert some somewhere close and preferably moist thrust repeat. How flattering. Now, making a woman come, therein lies a challenge. Oh, you think so? Girl makes a guy come, it's standard. A guy makes a girl come, it's a talent. And I actually date you? Something wrong? I'm insulted. Believe me, Don Juan, it takes more than that to get a guy off. Just being there, as you put it, is not enough. Touched a nerve. I'm astonished to hear you trivialize my role in our sex life. It wasn't directed at you. I was making a broad generalization. You are making a generalization about broads. These are my opinions based on my experiences with the few women who were good enough to let me sleep with them. How many? How many what? How many girls have you slept with? How many different girls? Didn't we already have this discussion once? We might have. I don't remember. How many? Including you? It better be up to and including me. Twelve. You've slept with twelve different girls? Including you, yes. Oh, she slaps him. <laughs> Sorry. What the hell was that for? You're a pig. Why'd you hit me? 
Do you know how many different men I've had sex with? Do I get to hit you after you tell me? Three. Three? Three, including you. You've only had sex with three different people. I'm not the pig you are. Who? You. No. Who were the three besides me? Don Franson and Rob Stiles Stanslick. Wow, that's great. That's something to be proud of. I am, and that's why you should feel like a pig. You men make me sick. You'll sleep with anything that says yes. Animal, vegetable, or mineral. Vegetable meaning paraplegic. They put up the least amount of struggle. After dropping a bombshell like that, you owe me, big. All right, name it. I want you to come with me on Monday. Where? To school. There's a seminar about getting back into a scholastic program after a lapse in enrollment. Can't we ever have a discussion without that coming up? It's important to me, Dante. You have so much potential that just goes to waste in this pit. I wish you'd go back to school. Jesus, would you stop? You make my head hurt when you talk about this. Veronica stands, letting Dante's head hit the floor. Shit, why are we getting up? Unlike you, I have a class in 45 minutes. A handsome young man is standing at the counter. Veronica reacts to him. Willem! Ronnie, how are you? You work here now? Uh, no, I'm just visiting my man. Dante, this is Willem Black. This is Dante Hicks, my boyfriend. How are you? Just the soda? And a pack of cigarettes. Are you still going to Sutton Hall? No, I transferred into Monmouth this year. I was tired of missing him. Do you still talk to Sylvan? I just talked to her on Monday. We still hang out on weekends. That's cool. Well, you two lovebirds take it easy, all right? I will. Take it easy. Bye. Willem exit. Bye. That was Snowball. Why do you call him that? Silva made it up. It's a blowjob thing. What do you mean? After he gets a blowjob, he likes to have the cum spit back into his mouth while kissing. It's called snowballing. He requested this? He gets off on it. Sylvan can be talked into anything. Why do you say that? Like you said, she snowballed him. Sylvan? No, I snowballed him. Yeah, right. I'm serious. A moment of silence as Dante's chuckle fades into comprehension. You suck that guy's dick? Yeah, how do you think I know he likes? But, but you said you only had sex with three guys. You never mentioned him. That's because I never had sex with him. You sucked his dick. We went out a few times. We didn't have sex, but we fooled around. Oh my God. Dante's having a massive panic attack. Why did you tell me you only slept with three guys? Because I only, because I did only sleep with three guys. That doesn't mean I didn't just go with people. Oh my God. I feel so nauseous. I'm sorry, Dante, I thought you understood. I did understand. I understand that you slept with three different guys. That's all you said. Please calm down. How many? Dante. How many dicks have you sucked? Let it go. How many? All right, shut up for a second, I'll tell you. Jesus, I didn't freak like this when you told me how many girls you fucked. This is different. This is important. How many? She counts silently, using fingers as Mark. Dante waits on a customer in the interim. Veronica stops counting. Well? Something like 36. <laughs> what? Something like 36? Lower your voice. What the hell is that anyway? Something like 36. Does that include me? Um, 37. I'm 37? I'm going to class. 37. My girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. In a row? Dante chases Veronica down and grabs her by the door. Hey, where are you going? 
Hey, listen, jerk. Until today, you never even knew how many guys I slept with because you never even asked. And then you act all nonchalant about fucking 12 different girls. Well, I never had sex with 12 different guys. No, but you sucked enough dick. Yeah, I went down on a few guys. A few? And one of those guys was you, the last one, I might add, which, if you're too stupid to comprehend, means that I've been faithful to you since we met. All the other guys I went with before I met you, so if you want to have a complex about it, go ahead. But don't look at me like I'm the town whore because you were plenty busy yourself before you met me. Well, why did you have to suck their dicks? Why didn't you sleep with them like a decent person? Because going down, it's a... Because going down is a big deal. I used to like a guy would make out and sooner or later I would go down on him. But I only had sex with the guys I loved. I feel sick. I love you. Don't feel sick. Every time I kiss you now, I'm going to taste 36 different, 36 other guys. Veronica violently let go of him. I'm going to school. Maybe later you'll be a bit more rational. 37. I just can't. Goodbye, Dante. She exits in a huff. Dante stands there in silence for a moment. Then he swings the door open and yells out. Try not to suck any more dicks on your way through the parking lot. Two men who are walking in the opposite direction outside double back and head in the direction Veronica went. Hey, hey you, get back here. Cut to the interior of the convenience store, day. A video ca cassette encased in the customary black box flips repeatedly, held by an impatient grasp. The impatient customer glares at Dante. Dante studies a copy of Paradise Lost, making a strong attempt at not noticing the glare. I thought that place was supp supposed to be open at 11 o'clock. It's 20 after. I called his house twice already. He should be here soon. It's not like it's a demanding job. I'd like to get paid to sit on my ass and watch TV. The other day I walked in there and that son of a bitch was sleeping. I'm not, sh I'm sure he wasn't sleeping. You calling me a liar? No, he was probably just resting his eyes. What the hell is that, resting his eyes? It's not like he's some goddamn air traffic controller. Actually, that's his night job. That's a wise ass, but go ahead, crack wise. That's why you're jockeying a register in some fucking local convenience store instead of doing an honest day's work. I got no more time for bullshit around waiting for that son of a bitch. You make sure this gets back. The number is 812 Winarski, and I wanted to get a damn movie, too. If you'll just tell me the title of your rental choice, I'll have him hold it for you. Don't hurt yourself. I'm going to Big Choice Video instead. He storms out. Dante lifts a ring of keys from the counter. You forgot your keys. The half-filled trash can swallows the ring of keys. Cut to the exterior of the convenience store, daytime. Another video anxious customer leans against the video store door. A hapless Randall drifts by and stops. He glances at the door, peers inside, and gives the door a tug. The guy ain't here yet. You're kidding. It's almost 11. I know. I've been here since 11. Man, I hate it when I can't read videos. I would have went, I would have went big, went. Cho to that big choice, but the tape I want is right there on the wall. Which one? Dental school. Dental school. You get that too? That's the movie I came for. I have first dibs. Says who? Says me. I've been here for half an hour. I'd call that first dib. Ain't gonna happen, my friend. I'm getting that tape. Like hell you are. I'll give you 20 bucks you can run that tape. 20 bucks? 20 bucks. All right, asshole, you're on. Randall walks away. The very anxious customer stands like a sentry post. The impatient customer storms up. You see a pair of keys laying around here somewhere? Cut to the interior convenience store daytime. Randall dances in, attempts a soft shoe routine. He sees Dante and stops dead mid-shuffle. You're late. What the hell are you here? I thought you were playing. The boss called. 
Arthur fell ill. Why are the shutters closed? Bunch of savages in this town. Bunch of savages in this town. That's what I said. Shit. It worse. I'd have come even later. A pile of video cassettes is plopped on the counter and a single key on top. Randall balances the pile of tapes on his head. What time do you have to stay till? He assured me that he'd be here by 12. What smells like shoe polish? Go open the store. Cut to the exterior of the convenience store, daytime. Impatient customer stops Randall. Uh, hey, do you see a set of keys lying around here? No time for love, Dr. Jones. <laughs> Randall marches off and the impatient customer stares after him. Fucking kids. The very anxious customer now sits on the ground next to the video store door. Randall balances his burden and shoves the key into the lock. Very anxious customer stares as Randall enters the store. The door closes behind him only to be held ajar by a gentlemanly fashion a few moments later. Randall smiles. Cut to the interior convenience store, daytime. A coffee filter is shown is shoved into the metal pan and someone heaps ground coffee on it. We've seen the same routine before. Dante crosses back to his post as Randall enters, tossing the key into the air, happily catching it. He picks the cat up. Some guy just came in refusing to pay late fees. He said the store was closed for two hours yesterday. I tore up his membership. Shocking abuse of authority. I'm a firm believer in the philosophy of a ruling class, especially since I rule. Is the pelican flying? Don't screw with it. It makes us look suspicious. I can't avoid it. I'll be back. Randall heads towards the door, uh, towards the walk-in door. Cut to the interior back room, daytime. From the point of view of a VCR, a faraway wall is the only thing we see but the mild gruntings give away an ascension of shots. Randall's head rises into view as he climbs a ladder. He steps and looks into the lens. From the point of view of Randall, the Pelican is a VCR that's hooked up to the surveillance camera. It records quickly. A hand reaches into the frame and shuts it off. Cut to the convenience store daytime. Randall pulls, pulls a soda from the cooler. Want something to drink? I'm buying. No, thanks. Who was on your phone this morning? 2.30. I was trying to call you for half an hour. Why? I want to use your car. He walks by the row of snacks and grabs one without looking at it. Snack cake? Dante sits in his seat behind the register. Ah. Randall grabs a paper and joins him behind the counter. You don't want to know. You called Caitlin again? She called me. Did you tell Veronica? One fight a day with Veronica is about all I can stomach, thanks. What do you two fight about? I guess it's not really fighting. She just wants me to leave here, go back to school, get some direction. I'll bet the most frequent topic of arguments is Caitlin Bree. You win. I'm going to offer you some advice and let the past be the past. Forget Caitlin Bree. You know, you've been with Veronica for how long now? Seven months. Shit, nuts about you. How long did you date Caitlin? Five years. Chick only made you nuts. She cheated on you how many times? Eight and a half. Eight and a half? Party at John Kay's senior year. I got blitzed and passed out on his bedroom. Caitlin came in and dives all over me. That's cheating? In the middle of it, she calls me Brad. She called you Brad? She called me Brad. That's not cheating. People say crazy shit during sex. One time, I called this girl mom. 
I hit the lights and she freaks. Turns out she thought I was Brad Michelson. What do you mean? She was supposed to meet Brad Michelson in a bedroom. She picked the wrong one. She had no idea I was even at the party. Oh my God. Great story, isn't it? That girl was vile to you. Interesting postscript to that story. Do you know who wound up going with Brad Michelson in the other bedroom? Your mother? Alan Harris. Test team Alan Harris? The two moved to Idaho together after graduation. They raised sheep. That's frightening. Takes different strokes to move the world. In light of this lurid tale, I don't see how you could even romanticize the relationship. She broke your heart and into deviant lives. Because there was a lot of good in our relationship. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. Aside from the cheating, we were a great couple. That's what high school's all about. Algebra, bad lunch, and infidelity. You think things would be different now? They are. When she calls me now, she's a different person. She's frightened and vulnerable. She's about to finish college and enter the real world. That's got to be scary for anyone. Oh, shit. I got to place an order. I'm talking to myself here. No, no. I'm. She's leaving college and... And she's looking to me for support. And I think this is leading our relationship to a new level. The Veronica. I think the arguments Veronica and I ha are having are some kind of manifestations of a subconscious desire to break away from her so that I can pursue the possibility of a more meaningful relationship with Caitlin. And Caitlin's on the same wavelength? I think it's safe to say yes. Now I think you'd better sit down and talk it over. All four? You, Veronica, Caitlin, and Caitlin's fiance. The headline of the engagement announcement reads, Bree to wed Asian design major. Cut to you, interior video store, daytime. Randall dials the phone. He holds the list in his hand. Yes, I'd like to place an order, please. Thank you. A mother and her small child approach the counter. Excuse me, but do you sell videotapes? Uh, what were you looking for? It's called Happy Scrappy the Hero Pup. Happy Scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on the phone with the distribution app now. <laughs> Let me make sure they have it. What's it called again? Happy Scrappy the Hero Pup. Happy Scrappy. <laughs> <laughs> they love the tape. Obviously. Yes. Hello? Yes, this is RST video calling. Customer number 435029. I'd like to place an order. Okay. I need one each phone tapes. We're in the wind to each zone where it doesn't belong. My pets need cleaning. All tip fucking volume eight. I need your cock, ass worshiping rim jobbers, my cunt and eight shafts. Come clean, come gargling naked sluts. Come on three, coming in a sock. Come on Eileen, huge <laughs> black box with early white cum. Slam it up my too loose ass, ass blasters in outer space, blowjobs, sucking cock and cunt, finger my ass, play with my puss, three on a dildo, girls who crave cock, girls who crave cunt, no two, the KY can win. pink pussy lips, and all holes filled with hard cock. Oh, and was in a movie? He's scrapping the hero pop. And a copy of Happy Scrappy Hero Pop. Okay, thanks. 
1649. It'll be here on Monday. Silence. And then? Cut. Cut to the interior of the convenience store, daytime. Dante carries a litter box to be dumped. He pauses mid-strike and uh, lays it on the ice cream chest. Dante picks up the phone and looks at the paper. He dials and waits. Yes, I'd like to check on a misprint in today's edition. Today's edition. It, it says, uh, breed to wed Asian design major. No, no, everything's spelled fine. I just wanted to know if the piece was a, was a misprint. I, I don't know, like a typographical error or something. Customer comes to the counter and waits. He looks at the litter box. A black cat suddenly jumps into it and starts pawing around. Maybe it's supposed to be Caitlin Bray or Caitlin Bree with one E. I'm, I'm, I'm a curious party. A curious party. Dante still on the phone. I'm an ex-boyfriend. Well, it's just that we, we talk all the time and she never mentioned this engagement, which is why I'm thinking maybe it's a misprint. A uh, customer watches as the cat takes a huge dump, leaning on a tonsus to, ac to accommodate the stinky load. Are you sure? Maybe there's like a vindictive printer working for you? Dante continues on the phone. Meaning like somebody who maybe, I don't know, asked her out once and got shot down and this is his revenge, is throwing his bogus article when the paper went to press. Hello? Hello? Dante hangs up. He looks at the paper ruefully, shaking his head, then sniffs the air. Cut to the exterior of the convenience store. Day. Jay, Silent Bob, and Olaf lean against the wall. Not in me. That's what she says. I gotta pull it out and spake it to get it on. So I blow, blow a nut on her belly, and I get out of there just as my uncle walks in. It was such a close call. I'll t I can tell you what, though. I don't care if she's my cousin. I'm going to knock those boots again tonight. <laughs> Two girls join them. Oh, shit. Look who it is. The human vacuum. Damn it. Why'd I have to pull this one? Scumbag. What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Just hanging out with Silent Bob and his cousin. He's your cousin? Check this out. He's from Russia. No way. I swear to God. Silent Bob, am I lying? Silent Bob shakes his head. See, and Silent Bob never told a lie in his life. What part of Russia? I don't fucking know. What am I, his biographer? Olaf, what part of Russia are you from? Olaf looks quizzically at Silent Bob. Silent Bob, in Russian, home. <laughs> Moscow. He only speaks Russian? He knows some English, but he cannot speak it good like we do. Is he staying here? He's moving to the big city next week. He wants to be a metal singer. No way. Swear. Olaf, metal. Olaf makes a metal face. That's his fucking metal face. Olaf, girl's nice. Olaf looks at the girls up and down. Skrelnik. That's fucked <laughs> up. What do you think? I don't know, man. He's a fucking character. He really wants to play metal? He's got his own band in Moscow. It's called Fuck You Yankee Blue Jeans or something like that. That doesn't sound metal. You gotta hear him sing, Olaf Berserker. Olaf laughs and shakes his head. Come on, man, Berserker. Does he sing in English or Russian? English. Come on, Berserker. Girls think sexy. Da, da. Oh, he's gonna sing it. This is too funny. My love for you is like a truck, Berserker. Would you like some making fuck, Berserker? That's fucking funny, man. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Olaf, sing. My love for you is like a rock berserker. Would you like to smoke some pot berserker? Olaf bursts a crimson metal sneer and cackles deeply. Cut to the interior of the video store, daytime. Randall <laughs> leans back in his chair, staring up at the TV. The theme to Star Wars plays. He stands, points the remote, and clicks the TV off, and ponders. 
My love for weeks. you is ticking clock berserker. Would you like to suck my cock berserker? Cut to the interior of the convenience store. Dante is tugging at a can of Pringles potato chips. The can is stuck on a man's hand. You hold the counter and I'll pull. Usually I just turn the can upside down. Maybe we should use soap, your hand, or something. Put some kind of warning on these cans like they do with cigarettes. I think it's coming now. The can pops off and Dante staggers back a few steps. The man rubs his hand. Thanks. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital. I'll throw this out. Precautionary measure. Stings a little. That's what she said. <laughs> a word of advice. Sometimes it's best to let those hard to reach chips go. Dante steps behind the counter. Thanks. The man exits as Randall enters. Dante throws the canister away. Do you know that the article is accurate? Caitlin's really getting married? You know what I just watched? Me pulling a can off some moron's fist? Return of the Jedi. Didn't you hear me? Caitlin's really is getting married. Which did you like better? Jedi or the Empire Strikes Back? Empire. Blasphemy. Empire had a better ending. Luke gets his hand cut off and finds out Vader's his father. Han gets frozen and taken away by Boba Fett. It ends on such a down note. And that's life. A series of down endings. All Jedi was was a bunch of Muppets. There was something else going on in Jedi. I never noticed it until today. Randall follows Dante as he cleans up around the store. What's that? All right. Vader's boss. The Emperor. Right. The Emperor. Now, the Emperor is kind of a spiritual figure, yes? How do you mean? Well, he's like the Pope for the dark side of the Force. He's a holy man, a shaman kind of, albeit an evil one. I guess. Now he's in charge of the Empire. The Imperial government is under his control. And the entire galaxy is under Imperial rule. Yeah. Yeah. Then wouldn't that logically mean that it's a theocracy? If the head of the Empire is a priest of some sort, then it stands to reason that the government is therefore one based on religion. It would stand to reason, yes. Hence... The Empire was a fascist theocracy, and the rebel forces were therefore battling religious persecution. More or less. The only problem is, at no point in the series did I ever hear Leia or any of the rebels declare a particular religious belief. I think they were Catholics. A blue-collar man half enters the door. Are you open? Yeah, come in. Uh, he goes to the coffee machine and makes a cup of Joe. You know what else I noticed in Jedi? There's more. So they build another Death Star, right? Yeah. Now the first one they built was completed and fully operational before the Rebels destroyed it. Luke blew it up. Give credit where it's due. And the second one was still being built when they blew it up. Compliments of Landau Calrissian. Something just never sat right with me the second time they destroyed it. I could never put my finger on it. Something just wasn't right. And you figured it out. Well, the thing is, the first, first Death Star was manned by the Imperial Army stormtroopers, dignitaries. The only people on board were Imperials. Basically. So we blew it up, no problem. Evil's punished. And the second time around? The second time around, it wasn't even finished yet. They were still under construction. So? Construction job of that magnitude would require a hell of a lot more manpower than the Imperial Army had to offer. Other independent contractors working on that thing. Plumbers, aluminum, roofers. No, just Imperials. Is that what you're getting at? 
Exactly. Built quickly. They hire anybody who could do the job. Do you think the average soldier knows how to install a toilet? Name? All they know is killing in white uniforms. All right. So even if independent contractors are working on the Death Star, why are they so? Why are you uneasy with its destruction? All those innocent contractors hired to do a job were killed. Casualties of a war they had nothing to do with. All right, look, you're a roofer, and some juicy government contract comes your way. You got the wife and kids and the two-story in suburbia. This is a government contract, which means all sorts of benefits. All of a sudden, these left-wing militants blast you with lasers and wipe out everyone within a three-mile radius. You didn't ask for that. You have no personal politics. You're just trying to scrape out a living. Blue collar man joins them. Excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt, but what were you talking about? The ending of Return of the Jedi. My friend is trying to convince me that the contractors working on the uncompleted Death Star were innocent victims when the space station was destroyed by the rebels. Well, I'm a roofer myself. Uh, or I'm a contractor myself. I'm a roofer. Done and ready home improvements. And speaking as a roofer, I can say that a roofer's personal politics come heavily into play when choosing jobs. Like when? Three months ago, I was offered a job up in the hills, a beautiful house with tons of property. It was a simple reshingling job, but I was told that if it was finished within a day, my price would be doubled. Then I realized whose house it was. Whose house was it? Dominic Bambino's. Baby face Bambino? The gangster? The same. The money was right, but the risk was too big. I knew who he was, and based on that, I passed the job on to a friend of mine. Based on personal politics. Right, and that week, the Foresky family put a hit on Babyface's house. My friend was shot and killed. Wasn't even finished shingling. No way. I'm alive because I knew there were risks involved taking on that particular client. My friend wasn't so lucky. So, you know, any contractor willing to work on the Death Star knew the risks. If they were killed, it was their own fault. A roofer listens this, not his wallet. Blue Collar Man exits. Dante and Randall remain respectfully quiet for a moment. An angry woman opens the door and pokes her head in. Is that video store open or not? Cut to the interior of the video store. Randall reads the newspaper. An indecisive customer studies the two rental choices she holds. She looks from one movie to the other repeatedly. They say so much, but they never tell you if it's any good. Sorry, page turn. Okay, Randall hardly stirs and continues to read his paper. Uh, the indecisive customer half turns to see if her comment was even heard. She tries again, but this time with a different approach. Are either of these any good? Randall continues to read. The decisive customer tries harder and then louder and more direct. Sir. Randall continues to read. What? Indecisive customer holds up the rental choices. Are either of these any good? Randall, as always, reads on. I don't watch movies. The indecisive customer is a tad flabbergasted, but not completely put off. Well, have you heard anything about either of them? Randall does his level best not to get involved. No. Indecisive customer challenges him. You've never heard anybody say anything about either movie? I find it's best to stay out of other people's affairs. Well, how about these two? Um. Uh, he continues to read the paper, still not looking up. They suck. The indecisive customer smirks smugly at Randall and his paper. She's caught him. Just got to get the sentiment up my inner Karen. <laughs> I just held up the same two movies. You're not even paying attention. No, I wasn't. I don't think your manager would appreciate 
I don't appreciate your ruse, ma'am. I beg your pardon? Your ruse? Your cunning attempt to trick me? I only point out that you weren't paying any attention to what I was saying. I hope it feels good. You hope what feels good? I hope it feels so good to be right. There's nothing more exhilarating than pointing out the shortcomings of others, is there? The indecisive customer wears a face that belies utter disbelief in the audacity of this most lackadaisical video clerk. An unmoving newspaper illustrates the total disinterest of the news-hungry Randall. The indecisive customer shakes her head in disgust, throws the movies back onto the wall. Well, this is the last time I ever rent here. You'll be missed. Screw you! She storms out. Randall is offended. He hops over the counter and whips the door open. You're not allowed to rent here anymore! Randall closes the door and stands there momentarily, totally appalled by her exiting remark, and then shakes his head. Screw me? He reaches behind the counter and grabs a ring of keys. Exiting, he locks the door behind him from the outside, gives it a tug to ensure its security, and storms off in the opposite direction of the woman. Cut to the interior of the convenience store at daytime. Dante is starting, is staring, open mouth at something that Randall hurls, at something off camera. Randall hurls the door open and immediately launches into his tirade. You'll never believe what this unruly customer just said. Wait. She's in here? This guy is going through all of the eggs. Look. An odd man sits on the floor, surrounded by cartons of eggs, all open. He grabs a carton from the cooler case, pops it open, and examines each egg carefully. This has been going on for 20 minutes. Randall and Dante study the off-camera oddity. What's he looking for? He said he has to find the perfect dozen. Perfect dozen? Each egg has to be perfect. And the quest isn't going well. Obviously not. Look at all the cartons that didn't make the grade. The odd man holds an egg up to the light and studies it from several different angles. Why doesn't he just mix and match? I told him that, and he yelled at me. Randall snickers at his friend. <laughs> What'd he say? He said it was important to have standards. He said nobody has pride anymore. It's not like you laid the eggs yourself. I'll give him five more minutes, then I'm calling the cops. I don't need this, man. I'm not even supposed to be here today. A smoker steps in. Two packs of cigarettes. A smoker. Dante manages to break his study of the off-camera oddity and searches for the smokes. The smoker glances at Randall and then at the off-camera oddity. The odd man is spinning an egg on the floor. Smoker looks at Randall. I'm as puzzled as you. I've actually seen it before. You know him? No, I've seen that behavior before, looking for the perfect carton of eggs, right? Yeah, how'd you know? I'll bet you a million bucks that guy's a guidance counselor. Why do you say that? When I was in the food city last year, when the same thing happened, different guy though. Stock boy told me that the guy had been looking through the eggs for like half an hour doing all sorts of endurance tests and shit. I asked the kid how come nobody called the manager and he said it happens twice a week, sometimes more. Get out of here. I kid you not, they call it shell shock. Only happens with guidance counselors for some reason. The kid said they used to make big deal about it, but there's no point. The odd man places a handkerchief over the egg on the floor. He quickly whisks the handkerchief away to reveal the egg still sitting on the floor. He said they always pay for whatever they break and they never bother anybody. Dante, Randall, and the smoker stare at the off-camera man. Why guidance counselors? If your job served as little purpose as theirs, wouldn't you lose it too? I don't give it. My guidance counselor was kind of worthless. 
See, it's important to have a job that makes a difference, boys. That's why I masturbate animals for artificial insemination. <laughs> uh, cut to interior convenience store daytime. From the point of view of Randall, the empty counter. And then a little girl comes into view, smiling and holding money. She couldn't be any more than five. Let me try it again. Can I have a pack of cigarettes? Randall, without looking up from his magazine, completes the transaction. The little girl puts a cigarette in her mouth. Randall hands her matches. Dante returns to the counter as the girl skips away. Dante holds a price gun. Did you ever notice all the prices in he end in nine? Damn, that's eerie. You know how much money the average jizz mopper makes per hour? What's a jizz mopper? He's the guy in those nudie booth joints who cleans up after each guy that jerks off. Nudie booth? Nudie booth. You've never been in a nudie booth? I guess not. A female customer pops items onto the counter. Dante rings her up. Oh, it's great. You step into this little booth, and there's this little window between you and this naked woman, and she puts on this little show for like 10 bucks. What kind of show? Think of the weirdest, craziest shit you'd like to see chicks do. These chicks do it all. They insert things into any opening in their body. Any opening. He's led a very sheltered life. Can we talk about this later? The jizz mopper's job is to clean up the booths afterwards because practically everybody shoots a load against the window. And I don't know if you know or not, but come leave streaks if you don't clean it right away. This is the last time I come to this place. Excuse me? Using filthy language in front of the customers, you should both get fired. We're sorry, ma'am. We got a little carried away. Well, I don't know if sorry can make up for it. I found your remarks highly offensive. The customer stands silently, waiting something. Well, do you think that's offensive? Randall flips open the magazine centerfold a graphic picture of a woman with her vaginal lips and anus spread wide open. Then check this out. I think you can see your kidney. Randall checks out the centerfold wistfully. Dante frantically apologizes to the rapidly exiting customer. Ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry. Please wait a second, ma'am. The customer is already gone. Dante's pursuit stops at the counter. Dante turns to Randall. Why do you do things like that? You know she's going to come back and tell the boss. Who cares? That lady's an asshole. Everybody that comes up in here is way too uptight. This job would be great if it wasn't for the fucking customers. I'm going to hear it tomorrow. You got to loosen up, my friend. You'd feel a hell of a lot better if you just rip into the occasional customer. What for? They don't bother me if I don't bother them. Liar. Tell me those aren't. There aren't customers that annoy the piss out of you on a daily basis. There aren't. How can you lie like that? Why don't you vent? Vent your frustration. Come on. Who pisses you off? It's not really anyone per se. It's more of separate groupings. Let's hear it. The milkmaids. The milkmaids. Insert milk handler. A woman pulls out a gallon after gallon, looking deep into the cooler for the perfect container of milk. The woman, the women that go through every gallon of milk looking for a later date, as if somewhere beyond all the other gallons is a container from, of milk that will, won't go bad for like a decade. And insert. You know what I can do without? I could do without the people in the video store. Which ones? All of them. Montage insert number one, video jerks. A series of people addressing the camera, asking the dumb questions. What would you get for a six-year-old boy who chronically wets his bed? Do you have any new movies in? Do you have that one with the guy who was in that movie that was out last year? And insert. 
And they never rent quality flicks. They always pick the most intellectually devoid movie on the rack. Montage insert number two. Ooh. An identical series of customers finding their ideal choices. Ooh, Home Alone. Ooh, Hook. Ooh, Navy Seals. End insert. It's like, in order to join, they have to have an IQ less than their shoe size. <laughs> you think you get the stupid questions? You should hear the barrage of stupid questions I get. Montage insert number three, dumb questions. A series of people standing in various locations throughout the convenience store asking truly dumb questions. What do you mean there's no ice? You mean I gotta drink this coffee hot? How much? Do you sell hubcaps for a 72 uh, Pinto hatchback? And insert. You mentioned, don't you feel better now? No. Why not? Because my ex-girlfriend is getting married. Jesus, she got a one-track mind. It's always Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. Veronica! Dante gives Randall a shove to shut him up. Veronica enters the store, carrying books and something covered with aluminum foil. What happened to Home by 12? Dante is suddenly by her side, taking the books from under her arm. He still hasn't shown up. Why aren't you in class? Lit 101 got canceled, so I stopped home and brought you some lunch. What is it? Peanut butter and jelly with the crust cut off. When you think it is, it's lasagna. Really? Kisses her on the forehead. You're the best. I'm glad you've calmed down a bit. Hi, Randall. 37. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I've calmed down. I'm still very not happy about it, but I've been able to deal. Randall makes loud slurping noises from the off camera. Why don't you go back to the video store? Randall walks past the tube, pats Veronica on the head while he exits. You had to tell him. I had to tell someone. He put it into perspective. What did he say? He said at least it wasn't 36. And that made you feel better. And he said most of them were college guys I've never met or seen. Ostrich syndrome, if you don't see it. It isn't fair, yes. Thank you for being rational. Thank you for the lasagna. You couldn't get these shutters open? I called the locksmith and he said the earliest he could get here is tomorrow. Bummer, well, I've got to head back for the 1.30 class. What time do you get finished? Eight, but I have a sorority meeting till nine, so I'll be back before you close. Can we go out and get some coffee? Sure. Good. She kisses him. I'll see you when you close in. Enjoy the lasagna. She exits. Dante leans against the magazine rack with his lasagna, contemplative. Randall pops his head in and makes loud slurping noises again. Cut to the interior of the video store. Day. Randall is recommending titles to potential customers. All right. Now, if you're really feeling dangerous tonight, then Smokey and the Bandit 3 is the movie you must rent. This doesn't even have Burt Reynolds in it. Hey, neither did E.T., but that was a great movie, right? Dante opens the door and leans in. Can you come next door? I got to make a phone call. Smokey three, thumbs up, am I right? The best Burtless movie ever made. Dante exits. Randall gives his customers the, what did I tell you, look. Cut to the interior of the convenience store. The cat lies on the counter. Pull back to reveal Randall as he rings up an order. The customer pets the cat, smiling. Aw, oh, he's so cute. What's his name? Lennon Jim. Dolly, over to Dante on the phone. Hello, is Mr. Snyder there? This is Dante. Did he say if he was on his way here? Here? The convenience store. I know, but the other guy called out this morning and Mr. 
Snyder asked me to cover until he got here. He said he'd be here by noon. It's 1.30 now, so I, uh, excuse me? Vermont? No, that can't be. I talked with him this morning. He left at what time? He really went to Vermont. When the hell was somebody going to tell me? He promised that he was coming by noon. Jesus. What time does he get back? Tuesday? You've got to be fucking kidding me. I've got a fucking hockey game at two. And the fucking shutters are jammed closed. And he's in Vermont? I'm not even supposed to be here today. So I'm stuck here until closing. This is just great. I just can't believe. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you. No, no, I'll be all right. Well, that's that's all I can do, right? Thanks. He he hangs up and Randall joins him. Vermont. Can you believe this? Didn't then that we called you this morning? Not a fucking word. Slippery shit. So what? You're stuck here all day? Fuck. Why'd you apologize? What? I heard you apologize. Why? You have every right in the world to be mad. I know. That seems to be the lame motif in your life, ever backing down. I don't back down. Yes, you do. You always back down. You assume blame that isn't yours. You come in when called as opposed to enjoying your day off. You buckle like a belt. You know what pisses me off the most? The fact I'm right about your buckling? I'm going to miss the game. Because you buckled. Would you shut the hell up with that shit? It's not helping. Don't yell at me. Sorry. See, there you go again. I can't believe I'm going to miss the game. At least we're stuck here together. You've got a customer. Randall walks away. What? What do you want? Dante shakes his head in frustration and picks up the phone again. Sanford? Dante. I can't play today. I'm stuck at work. I know I'm not scheduled, but just forget it. I can't play. Neither can Randall. He's working too. Randall comes back. Dante rolls his eyes to the ceiling. Wait a second. Do we have to play at the park? Hold on. Do you feel limber? Cut to the interior of the convenience store, daytime. Tape is rolled around the top of a stick. Laces are pulled tightly. An orange ball is slapped back and forth by a blade. The hockey players fill the convenience store. Some sit on the floor or lean against the coolers, but all are either preparing or practicing. Randall enters wearing his equipment. Dante skates to his side. Pull my laces tighter. I got to tell you, my friend, this is one of the ballsiest moves I've ever been privy to. I never would have thought you capable of such blatant disregard of store policy. I told him I had a game today. It's his own fault. No argument here. Insubordination rules. I just want to play hockey like I was scheduled to. Sanford skates up and skids to a halt. Dante, let me grab a Gatorade. You grab a Gatorade, then everybody's going to grab one. Oh? So? Nobody's going to want to pay for these Gatorades. What do you care? Hey, what smells like shoe polish? I've got a responsibility here. I can't let everybody grab free drinks. What responsibility? You're closing the fucking store to play hockey. He's blunt, but he's got a point. At least let me maintain some semblance of managerial control here. All I'm saying is if you're going to be insubordinate, you should go the full nine and not pussy out when it comes to free refreshments. He's right. As if we're suddenly going to have a run on Gatorade. Fucking A. All right. Jesus, you fuckers are pushy. 
Hey man, I hear Caitlin's majoring in Asian design major. Drum major. Design major. Can we not talk about this? Fine by me, but you're living in denial and suppressing rage. Dante said we can all drink free Gatorade. Yay. <laughs> Are you gonna lock the store? I don't know. You gonna lock the video store? Look at your ass in here. How are we gonna block off the street? We're not playing in the street. Then where are we gonna play? Cut to the exterior of the convenience store, daytime. Sign on the door reads, temporarily closed, be open after first period. The players ascend the ladder adjacent to the door, one by one. On the roof, they jump off the ladder and skate around. More players join them. From across the street, we get the full, odd perspective, a store with many men gliding around on the roof. On the roof, Dante skates and passes with another player. Redding stretches, leaning against a sign. Randall pulls his mask on and slaps his gloves, urging a shot. Sanford skates in and takes a shot while Randall blocks. Jay and Silent Bob deal to a player. He drops money over the ledge and Jay throws up a dime bag. Dante holds a ball in the center of the court. Ready? Players take position. Sanford comes up to center and holds a ball in drop position. Dante and Redding face off and the ball is in play. The game begins as players engage in a savage ballet. Faces are smashed with sticks. Slide tackles are made. Shots are taken. CUs of various players included. Inactive players call out encouragement and slander of the sidelines. From the sidelines, rather. More game playing includes both goalies getting scored on and more face-offs. Below, a customer tugs on the convenience store door, reads the sign, backs up to the street, attempting to peer over the ledge. Above, the game continues. Below, customer shifts from one foot to the other impatiently, grabs the ladder, and quickly ascends. Above, from over the ledge of the roof, we see the head of the customer peek. Skating feet pass rapidly by him, and he watches for a moment before calling out. When's this period over? Eight more minutes. Are you shitting me? I want to get cigarettes. Dante skids to the sidelines. If you can just wait a few more minutes. Fuck that. I'm going to break my crazy neck on this ladder. Dante, where are you? He's busy. Dante starts to skate away. I'll be right back. It's almost over. He jumps back into the game. What the fuck is this? I want some service. In a second. Fuck in a second. This is, look at you. You can't even pass. I can pass. How about covering some point? You suck. Dante skids back to the sidelines to address the customer. Who are you to make assessments? I'll assess all I want. Dante, are you in or out? Don't pass to this guy. He sucks. You suck. Like you're better. You can whip your ass. Below, a woman pulls on the door. She peers into the store, face against the glass. That's easy for, that's easy to say from over here. Give me a stick, pretty boy. I'll knock your fucking teeth out and pass all over your ass. The woman backs up, shielding her eyes, looking towards the roof. Is the convenience store open? Above, Dante and the customer. No, uh, shot no! Down from the woman. <laughs> There's Dante, a stick over the there, customer. It's shooting against the goal. Reading, come over here and let this fuck on. A new face-off pits Dante against the customer. The ball drops between the two and Dante gets flattened. The customer winds up, takes a hard shot. Ball sails off the court, through the air, and into a faraway yard. Dante calls to the sidelines. Give me another ball! There are no more! What the fuck are you talking about? How many balls did you bring? Sanford there skates was, up to him. There was the orange ball and the orange ball. Dante scrambles over the edge and calls over. Are there any balls down there? About the biggest pair you've ever seen. <laughs> you only brought one Parker ball? Down. I thought Redding had like three balls. I thought Dante had the balls. Nobody has another ball. Shit. We got, what, 12 minutes of a game and it's over? Fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. 
I'm not even supposed to be here today. Dante skates off. We still get free Gatorade, right? Cut to you, interior of the convenience store. Dante, standing on the ladder, replaces a fluorescent light. An old man joins him at the foot of the ladder. Oh, God. Everybody can forgive me now. <laughs> be careful. I'm trying. You know, the insides of those are filled with the stuff that gives you cancer. So I'm told. Had a friend that used to chew glass for a living in the psychus. The light in place, Dante descends the ladder and closes it. And he got cancer by chewing fluorescent bulb glass. No, he got hit by a bus. Oh, can I help you? Well, that depends. <laughs> Do you have a bathroom? Get it? Um, yeah, but it's for employees only. I understand, but can I use it? I'm not, I'm not that young anymore, so I'm kind of, you know, incontinent. <sighs> sure, go ahead. It's back through the cooler. Thanks, son. Say, what kind of toilet paper you got back there? The white kind. First of all, why gotta be white? <laughs> I'm not asking about the color. I mean, is it rough or cottony? Actually, it's kind of rough. Rough, eh? Oh, that stuff ripped the hell out of my hemorrhoids. Say, uh, would you mind if I took a roll of the soft stuff back there? I see you sell the soft stuff. Yeah, but... Oh, come on, boy chick. What's the difference? You said yourself the stuff there is now is rough. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Thanks, son. You're a lifesaver. The old man walks off. Dante heads back to the counter. The old man returns. Say, young fella, you know I hate to bother you again, but can I take a paper of uh, something back there to read? It usually takes me a while, and I like to read while it's going on. Jesus, go ahead. Thanks, young man. You got a heart of gold. The old man sifts through some papers and a few magazines, comes back to the counter. You know, you probably could have been home already in the time that it's taken you to get here. Can I trouble you for one of those magazines? I said go ahead. No, I mean the ones there, behind the counter. Dante glances over and reacts. The porno mags? Yeah, I like the cartoons. They make me laugh. They draw the biggest titties. Here, now leave me alone. Uh, can I have the other one? The one below this one. They show more in that one. Dante makes the switch. Thanks, son. I appreciate this. The old man walks off. We hear the back door open and close, and then the front door does the same. Randall joins Dante. Hell of a game. One ball. They came all the way here. I closed the damn store for one ball. Hockey, hockey. At least we got to play. Randall, 12 minutes is not a game. Jesus, it's barely a warm-up. Bitch, bitch, bitch. You want something to drink? Gatorade. Pauses, and then... What happened to all the Gatorade? Exactly. They drank it all. After an exhausting game like that, I can believe it. It's not like we're going to sell out. Randall comes back with drinks. You know what Sanford told me? Offers him a drink. I still can't believe Caitlin's getting married. Julie Dwyer died. Yeah, right. No, I'm serious. Dante is visibly taken aback. Oh my god. Sanford's brother dates her cousin. I found out this morning. How? When? Embolism in her brain, yesterday. Jesus. She was swimming at the YMCA pool when it happened. Died mid-backstroke. I haven't seen her in almost two years. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't she one of the illustrious 12? Number six. You've had sex with a dead person. I'm going to go to her wake. Why not? Why not? It's today. 
What? What? Paul Schuster Parlor. The next show is at four. Shit. What about tomorrow? One night only. She's buried in the morning. You've got to watch the store. I have to go to this. Wait, wait, wait. Has it occurred to you that I might be bereaved as well? You hardly knew her. True. But do you know how many people are going to be there? All of our old classmates, to say the least. Stop it. This is beneath even you. I'm not missing what's going to probably be the social event of the season. You hate people. But I love gatherings. Isn't it ironic? Don't be an asshole. Somebody has to stay at the store. If you go, I go. She meant nothing to you. She meant nothing to you either until I told you she died. I'm not talking to you about this funeral. I'm going with you. I can't close the store. Can't close. You just closed the store to play hockey on the roof. Exactly, which means I can't close it for another hour so we can both go to the wake. All right, and scene there, that's the end of act one. We're gonna take 15 minutes, be back here at 8.45. We'll get to learn a little bit about Sex Positive St. Louis and we'll take the rest of this where Kelsey is finally gonna get to say some dialogue instead of giving me like silent reaction in the chat. Yay! Yay! Yay. It'll be me! Yay. So 8.45, we'll be back. All right.
Okay. It's basically 8.45, so we're good. Um, welcome back. It, we're, uh, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I also- sex tape. Say what? It's the title of your sex tape. <laughs> Sorry, I'll mute again. Was that in one of the, okay, I, just for those of you who are on the live stream who can't see like the Zoom like we all can, two things I want to note and then I'm going to throw it over to Nick so we can talk, we can talk a little bit about sex positive STL. Um, two things to note. One is that during Randall reading the entire list of pornos, like everybody in the chat, like Kelsey especially, but everybody in chat was just fucking corpsing and dying over that entire litany of pornos. Secondly, um, Cadaver totally put me into a corner by Russian relating me to be the old Jewish man, which I was basing on Dr. Zoidberg. I was so excited I didn't have to do that. Thank you for taking one for the team. Hey, volunteering. Pretty sure. I'm <laughs> yeah. So. All right. So I'm going to throw it over to Nick before we jump back in to talk about uh, sex positive STL and why we're raising money for them. So Nick, when it, Nick, take it. Okay. Um, so sex positive St. Louis uh, is a local uh, community organization. Um, they've been around for quite a while, started by Kendra Holiday and David Wraith. Um, their uh, website, sexstl.com, uh, has a lot of really amazing resources. They host a lot of events for the community. Um, and when I say the community, I mean the sex positive community. And so that's very wide. Uh, it's a wide umbrella. Um, and they're very, very interactive and, um, and a part of many different subcultures throughout St. Louis. Um, it's a really neat organization, uh, wonderful, really, really wonderful people running it. Um, and they have a really good staff as well. Um, I only brought up the owners, but it's just a fantastic group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want to donate, the PayPal link is in my Instagram. It's on the Facebook video. Uh, I should have put it in my Insta bio uh, probably will after this. But before we jump in, I do want to announce what we're going to be, what our next, uh, our next, uh, our next one is going to be. And I'm trying to get this to load by sharing my screen. Hopefully, this is able to go. So, so, okay. So there we go. Perfect. So yeah, our next one is going to be Dev Works Prada, which uh, Sam chose the charity for this one, and we're going to hopefully be doing that either the. Um, the last day of the month, which is the 31st, or, or, or the first uh, Sunday in June. So that one's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm, I'm just excited that we get to do this and have fun and raise money for all these wonderful uh, organizations. So if we're all here, uh, Mona, whenever you are ready to take us into act two. If Mona's there. <laughs> Jakey, where's your life made There at? you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, you still had me muted. Oh shit, I guess that might help if I, un if I unmute. Hold on. Yeah, I had, to, I had to go through and unmute myself. All right, cool. I know, I, I was like half a page down and then you're like, if she's there, I'm like, bitch, I'm reading. What are you talking about? I thought you were taking a dump. I mean, that's, that's normally your modus. Well, I'm clearly yeah. sitting on a couch. If I'm taking a dump, we have bigger issues. <laughs> Please anyway. don't sit on the couch, babe. With, with your mayonnaise ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fire mayonnaise at that. <laughs> okay. Take. Uh, throw back to things that the audience won't understand. Best kind of joke. Inside okay. joke. All right. <laughs> Cut to interior, car, daytime. Dante drives with passenger Randall. Their backs to the camera. You were saying? Thanks for putting me in a tough spot. You're a good friend. Silence. And then... She was pretty young, huh? 22. Same as us. An embolism in a pool. An embarrassing way to die. That's nothing compared to how my cousin Walter died. How'd he die? 
Broke his neck. That's embarrassing. He broke his neck trying to suck his own dick. Absolute silence. Then. Shut the hell up. Bible truth. Stop it. I swear. Oh my God. Come on. Haven't you ever tried to suck your own dick? No. No. Yeah, sure. You're so repressed. Because I never tried to suck my own dick? No, because you won't admit to it. As if a guy is a fucking pervert because he tries to go down on himself. You're as curious as the rest of us, pal. You've tried it. Who found him? My cousin? My aunt found him. In his bed, doubled over himself with his legs on top, dick in his mouth. My aunt freaked out. It was a mess. His dick was in his mouth? Balls resting on his lips. He made it, huh? Yeah, but at what a price. Silence. And then? I could never reach. Reach what? You know. What? Your dick? Yeah. Like you said, you know? I guess everyone tries it sooner or later. I never tried it. Dante glares at Randall. Silence. And then? Fucking pervert. Cut to exterior of the funeral parlor. Daytime. Dante and Randall walk up the path to the funeral parlor. I know it was a bad idea to close the store. Listen to you. I can't help it. At least when we were playing hockey outside, I could see if anybody wanted to go in. Nobody's there. It's four o'clock on a Saturday. How many people ever come to the store at four on a Saturday? Cut to the exterior of the convenience store. Daytime. Massive crowd outside the store. Cut back to the exterior of the funeral parlor. Day. Dante and Randall run to the front door, closely chased by a small crowd of angry mobsters. Car locks, uh, car locks are slammed down. The car screams away, and pursuing crowd stands in the middle of the street, shaking their fists, throwing things. Cut back to the exterior, exterior of the convenience store. Night. Car pulls up. Randall and Dante get out. Absolutely nobody is outside. I can't fucking believe you. I'm telling you, it wasn't my fault. You knocked the fucking cast casket over, for Christ's sake. I was just leaning on it. It was an accident. Does anyone ever knock over a casket on purpose? So the casket fell over. Big deal. Her fucking body fell out. So they'll put her back in. It's not like it's going to matter if she breaks something. Just go open the video store. Yeah, open the video store. Shut the fuck up, junkie. Jay enters the frame right next to Randall. He aims his butt at him and farts. Randall lunges for him. Dante grabs Randall. Go open the video store. Yeah, you cock-smoking clerk. How many times I gotta tell you not to deal from the outside of the store? I'm not dealing. A kid tugs at Jay's shirt. You got anything, man? Yeah, what do you want? Randall heads to the video store. Dante enters the convenience store and slides the, uh, the sign to open. After a few seconds, the impatient customer, guy who lost his keys, appears, flashlight in hand, scanning the ground. Hey, did you see a set of keys lying around here somewhere? Cut to the interior of the convenience store, nighttime. Dante rearranges the milk. Randall joins him. Let me borrow your car. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to. Fine. Just lend me your car. Why should I loan you my car? I want to rent a movie. You want to rent a movie? Dante walks away, shaking his head. What's that for? They head back to the, the counter. Video store. I work in a shitty video store. 
I want to go to a good video store so I can rent a good movie. Oh, shit, that's me. Are you open? <laughs> yes. yes. The customer comes to the counter. Bag of cigarettes. Pets the Cute cat. cat. Cute cat, what's its name? Annoying customer. <sighs> customer lets it sink in and then leaves in a huff. Dante puts up the cigarettes. Can you imagine being halfway decent to the customers at least some time of the some of the time? Let me borrow your car. May I be blunt with you? If you must. We are employees of Quick Stop Convenience and RST Video, respectively. As such, we have certain responsibilities which, though it may seem cruel and unusual, does include manning our posts until closing. I see. So playing hockey and attending wakes, these practices are standard open operating procedure. There's a difference. Those were obligations. Obligations that could not have been met at a later date. Now, renting videos? That's just gratuitous. Not to mention illogical, considering you work in a video store. Another customer leans in. Are you open? Yes. You know what? I don't think I care for your rationale. It's going to have to do for now, considering that it's my car upon request. Can I help you? Pack of cigarettes. What's your point? My point is that you're a clerk paid to do a job. You can't just do anything you want while you're working. Space Alien revealed as head of Time Warner reports stock increase. They print any kind of shit in these papers. They certainly do. 255. So your argument is that title dictates behavior? What? The reasons you won't let me borrow your car is because I have a title and a job description and I'm supposed to follow it, right? Exactly. I saw one time that said the world was ending the next week. And then in the next week's paper, they said we were miraculously saved at the zero hour by a koala fish mutant bird. Crazy shit. So I'm no more responsible for my own decisions while I'm here at work than say, the death squad soldiers in Bosnia? That's stretching it. You're not being asked to slay children or anything. Not yet. And I remember this one time, the damn paper said... Randall spits a mist of water at the customer, drenching him. The man reacts violently, attempting to grab Randall from over the counter. Randall makes no move, but remains untouched. Dante plays block. I'm gonna break your fucking head, you fucking jerk off. Sir, sir, I'm sorry. He didn't mean it. He was trying to get me. Well, he missed. I know. I'm sorry. Let me refund your cigarette money and we'll call it even. This is the last time I ever come here. And if I ever see you again, I'm going to break your fucking head open. Customer leaves wiping water from his face. Randall salutes him. What the fuck did you do that for? Two reasons. One, I hate when the people can't shut up about the stupid tabloid headlines. Jesus. And two, to make a point, title does not dictate behavior. What? If title dictated my behavior, as a clerk serving the public, I wouldn't be allowed to spit a mouthful of water at that guy. But I did, so my point is that people dictate their own behavior. Hence, even though I'm a clerk, I choose to go rent the choice. Agreed? You're a danger to both the living and the dead. I like to think I'm a master of my own destiny. Please, get the hell out of here. I know I'm your hero. Randall exits. Cuts to the interior of the convenience store. Daytime. Dante waits on a customer. He lifts a gallon of milk into a paper bag, letting out a slight grunt. Sounds to me like somebody needs to hit the gym. 
Excuse me? I heard you strain when you put the milk in the bag. The milk only weighs about seven pounds. I didn't strain. I sighed. I don't think so. That was a grunt, a deep in inhalation of oxygen to aid in the stretching of muscles. I'm a trainer. I know what that sound signifies. You're out of shape. I don't think so. Oh, I do. You made the same noise when you reached across the counter for my cash. Your muscles are thin and sadly underutilized. They are not. Yes, they are. You're out of shape. What are you talking about? There's no fat on this body. No fat, but no tone either. You don't get enough exercise. A female customer leans in the doorway. Are you open? Yes. Just the paper. 35. Let me ask you a question. Do you think this guy's out of shape? I don't know. I can't really tell from here. He is. I am not. How much can you bench? I don't know. I'd say about 60, 70 tops. I know I can do more. I know I can bench more than that. I think the lady called it. My ex-boyfriend was about his height, but he was much bulkier. He could bench 250, 300 easy. I do about 350, 400. No way. Feel that. That's tight, solid. Now feel his. Roll up your sleeve, chief. Oh, for God's sake. See, you're ashamed. You know, you're out of shape. Take my card. I can help you tone up that body in no time. Get you on an aerobics and free weights program. A suited man carrying a notebook comes to the counter and notes that Sarah completely lost her accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you gotta play TV. Huh. You open? Well that, was in, well, that was in the script. I don't even know where that came from. <laughs> Crazy yes. how that works. <clears throat> Pat, you got another one. I'm not out of shape. <laughs> Excuse me, but have you been here all day? What? He's got those love handles. I don't have love handles. Were you working here at four o'clock? I've been here since six o'clock this morning. Why? Probably from being around all this food every day. Oh, I know. If I had to work here all day, I'd be bloated and out of shape too. I'm not out of shape. Can I have your name, please? Dante Hicks. Why? What is this about? You're Dante Hicks? Oh my god, I didn't even recognize you. Because he's out of shape. Do I know you? You remember Alyssa Jones? She hung out with... Caitlin Bree. Yeah? I'm her sister. You're Alyssa's sister? Heather? Yep, I remember you got caught in my parents' room with Caitlin once. Did you say Caitlin Bree? <laughs> yeah. Pretty girl about this girl's height, dark hair, gorgeous body. Yeah. And your name is Dante Hicks. You went to high school with her. You played hockey. How do you know that? Oh. Uh, oh, oh, man. Hey, you still going out with her? No, she's getting married. To you? <laughs> to, to an Asian, Asian design major. <sighs> Shit. Don't take this the wrong way, but I used to fuck her. What? Well, you two were dating in high school. We were talking four or five years ago, back when I drove a Trans Am. Oh my God, you're Rick Darris. Yeah. <laughs> you know him? Caitlin used to talk about him all the time. Really? Oh yeah, you were the built older guy with the black trans and the big... <laughs> Wait a second. You used to sleep with Caitlin Bree while I was dating her? All the time, that girl was like a rabbit. I, I don't believe this. I still remember Caitlin telling us about that time you two went to the motel, the one with the mirrors and the hot tub in the room. The Glades Motel? Holy shit, she told you about that? Buddy of mine worked there, said he watched the whole thing. They used to film people at that hotel. Nobody knew about it. She said one time you set up a tent on the beach and you guys did it in the middle of this big brainstorm. What? When? When did all this shit happen? Hey man, that was a long time ago. Don't let it get to you. I'm surprised you never found out about it, Dante. Everybody in school knew, even in my class. Jesus Christ, what's next? 
The suited man rips a piece of paper out of his notebook and hands it to Dante. Here you go. What's this? A fine for $500. What? 500 bucks? What for? For violation of New Jersey statute section 2A number 170-51, any person sells or makes available tobacco or tobacco-related products to persons under the age of 18 is regarded as disorderly. What are you talking about? According to the NG NJAC, the New Jersey Administrative Code, Section 185-12.5A, fine of no less than $250 is to be leveled against any person reported selling cigarettes to a minor. I didn't do that. You said you were here all day? Yeah, but I didn't sell cigarettes to any kids. An angry mother called the State Division of Taxation and complained that the man working a quick stop convenience sold her five-year-old daughter cigarettes today at around four o'clock. Division of Taxation calls the State Board of Health and they send me down here to issue you a fine. You say you were working all day, hence the fine is yours. It's doubled due to the incredibly young age of the child. But I didn't sell cigarettes to any kids. One props to Cadaver for getting through all that legalese. That was amazing. <laughs> Now, to a five-year-old kid, what a That's scumbag. Sick. That's sick, Dante. I didn't sell cigarettes to kids, I swear. The due date is on the bottom. The summons cannot be contested in any court of law. Failure to remit before the due date will result in the charge of criminal negligence and a warrant will be issued for your arrest. Have a nice day. The suited man exits while with Dante trying to follow. But I didn't sell cigarettes to any kids. Hey. Forget it. I don't want to deal with a guy that sells cigarettes to a five-year-old. Can I offer you a ride somewhere? Uh, sure. How about the beach? I like the way you think. The two exit. Dante, alone, studies his summons and rubs his forehead. <clears throat> what? Jesus. What next? Kelsey. Dante? <laughs> what? His expression hey. softened. Cut to the exterior of the video store. Night. Jay deals with the customer as Silent Bob looks on. That's the price, my brother. No, why don't I pay that kind of cash? For this kind of hash, you need that kind of cash. How long are you going to be here? Till 10. Then I'm going to John Kay's party. You gonna be at John Kay's party? My man is dead. I'm going to John Kay's party! <laughs> Yo, don't sell all that, because I'm gonna get the cash and buy it from you at John Kay's. You're gonna bring it, right? The only place I don't bring my drugs is church, and that ain't till Sunday morning. Yo, I'll see you at that party. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. <laughs> John leaves, Jay turns to Silent Mob. It's motherfuckers like that that give re recreational drug users a bad name. Suddenly spotting somebody off camera. Hey, baby, you ever had your asshole licked? Cut to the interior of the convenience store, nighttime. Dante and Caitlin are embracing very tightly. We hold, uh, we hold on them for a few seconds just to let it sink in. And then... When did you get back? Just now. My God. I haven't seen you since. He hugs her again. Dante, you've got a customer. Dante hops behind the counter. Customer pays for something while Dante continues to talk. I just saw Alyssa's little sister outside. She was with Rick Darris. Let's not talk about that. How'd you get home? Train. It took eight hours. I can't believe you're here. Another customer comes into the counter. Excuse me, do you have... To the back, above the oil. How long are you staying? Until Monday, then I have to take the train back. Yet another customer comes to the counter. Pack of cigarettes. Congratulations, I saw the announcement in today's paper. She's marrying an Asian design major. So I'm told. Cut to the exterior of their video store, nighttime. Jay and Silent Bob lean against the wall. Man, it's fucking slow. Silent Bob walks out of frame, leaving Jay alone against the wall. 
He comes back a few seconds later carrying a mini Walkman with 10 watt speakers. He sets it down on the ground and turns it on. House music starts playing. Jay, possessed by the beat, breaks into an impromptu dance in which he makes suggestive and often lewd moves. Silent Bob leans against the wall. Cut to interior of the video store, nighttime, on counter. You're just gonna lock the store like that? I wanna talk to you about something and I don't wanna be disturbed. You saw it? Very dramatic, I thought. It's not what you think. What? It's worse? You're pregnant? With an agent design major's child? I'm not pregnant. Where are you gonna tell me or just send me an invitation? I was gonna tell you, but then we were getting along so well and I didn't wanna mess it up. You could have broke it to me gently, you know? At least started by telling me you had a boyfriend. I told you I have a girlfriend. I know, I'm sorry, but when we started talking, it's like I forgot I had a boyfriend and then he proposed last month. And you said yes? Well, kind of, sort of. Is that what they teach you at the school of yours? Kind of, sort of, everyone knows about this except me. Do you know how humiliating that is? I would have told you and you would have stopped calling like a baby. How do you know that? Because I know you, you prefer drastic measures to rational ones. So you're really getting married? No. No, you're not really getting married? The story goes like this. He proposed and I told him I had to think about it and he insisted I wear the ring anyway and my mother told the paper we were engaged. How like her? Then my mother called me this morning and told me the announcement was in the paper. That's when I hopped the train to come back here because I knew you'd be a wreck. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Was I right? Wreck is a harsh term. Disturbed is more like it. Mildly disturbed, even. I love a macho facade. It's such a turn on. <laughs> what smells like shoe polish? And you came here to what? To comfort me? The last thing I needed was for you to think I was hiding something from you. But you were. No, I wasn't. Not really. I told you I'd been seeing other people. Yeah, but not seriously. Christ, you're ready to walk down the aisle. I'd say that constitutes something more than just seeing somebody. i giving him his ring back. What? I don't wanna marry him. I don't wanna get married now. I'm on the verge of graduation. I wanna to go to grad school after this. And then I wanna start a career. I don't wanna be a wife first and then have to worry about what I'm gonna fit in, all the other stuff. I've come way too far and studied too hard to let my education go to waste as a housewife. And I know what's, that's what I become. Zeng's already signed with a major firm and he's gonna be pulling in a huge salary, which will give me no reason to work. And he's so traditional anyway. Zhang, his name is a past tense. Stop it, he's a nice guy. If he's so nice, why aren't you going to marry him? I just told you. There's more, isn't there? Why, Mr. Hicks, whatever do you mean? Tell me I don't have something to do with it. You don't have anything to do with it. You lie. Look how full of yourself you are. I just believe in giving credit where credit is due. And I believe that I'm the impetu impetus <laughs> behind your failure to wed. If I'm so nuts about you, then why am I having sex with an Asian design major? Jesus, you're caustic. I had to bring you down from that cloud you're floating on. When I say I don't want to get married, I mean just that. I don't want to marry anybody, not for years. So who's asking? I don't want to marry you. Good, stay in that frame of mind. But can we date? I'm sure saying in Veronica would like that. We could introduce them. They might hit it off. You're serious? You want to date again? I would like to be your boyfriend, yes. It's just the shock of seeing me after three years. Believe me, you'll get over it. Give me a bit more credit. I think it's time we got back together. You know, I'm more mature, you're more mature, you're finishing college, 
I'm already in the job market. You work in a market, all right. Cute. Tell me you wouldn't want to go out again after all the talking we've been doing. The key word here is talk, Dante. I think the idea, the conception of us dating is more idyllic than what actually happens when we date. So what? So we should just make pretend over the phone we're dating? I don't know. Maybe we should just see what happens. Let me take you out tonight. Me on a date? Yes. A real date. Dinner and a movie. The Dante Hicks dinner and a movie date. I think I've been on that one before. You have a better suggestion? How about the Caitlin Bree walk on the board rack then, then get naked somewhere kind of private date? I hear it's a rather popular date. Jerk. Here I am throwing myself at you, succumbing to your wily charms. And you call me a slut in so many words. What about Sing? Sang. Sang. He's not invited. He's your fiance. I offer you my body and you offer me semantics? He's just a boyfriend, Dante, in case you hadn't gotten the drift of why I came all the way here from Ohio, I'm about to become single again. And yes, let me placate your ego. You are the inspiration for this bold and momentous decision, but for which I'll probably be ostracized at both school and home. You ask me who I choose, I choose you. So what are you saying? You're such an asshole. I'm just kidding. I can already tell this isn't gonna work. I'll ask Randall to close up for me when he gets back. Where'd he go? I'd have thought he'd be on your side like an obedient lap dog. He went to rent a movie. He hasn't gotten back yet. Ah, screw it. I'll just lock the store up and leave him a note. You're too responsible. But no, I have to go home first. They don't even know I left school and I should break the disengagement news to my mother, which is gonna cause quite a row, considering she loves saying. Who doesn't? Well, me, I guess. <sighs> so I shall take my leave of you, but I will return in a little while, at which time, yes, I would love to go, to a din go for dinner and a movie with you. What happened to the walk and all of the nakedness? I'm easy, but I'm not that easy. See you later, handsome. Dante watches her leave. He then explodes in jubilance. Yes! Cut to interior of the convenience store at nighttime. Dante looks ahead dreamily, half spinning in his chair. Randall enters carrying videos. Get to work. What'd you rent? Best of both worlds? Hermaphroditic porn. Starlets with both organs. You should see the box. Beautiful women with dicks that put mine to shame. And this is what you rented. I like to expand my horizons. I got fined for selling cigarettes to a minor. No way. $500. You're bullshitting. Dante hands him the summons. Randall reads it. I didn't think they even enforced this. Living proof. I thought you never sold cigarettes to kids. I don't. You did. Really? Little girl. Maybe five years old. Holy shit. That girl? as opposed to the hundreds of other children you let buy cigarettes whenever you work here? Then how come you got the fine? Because I'm here. You're lying. I swear, I couldn't make this kind of hell up. Then why aren't you like screaming at me right now? Because I'm happy. You're happy. I'm happy. You're happy to get a fine? No, I'm happy because Caitlin came to see me. Now I know you're lying. I'm not, she just left. What did she say? 
She's not going to marry that guy. She went home to tell her mother. You're kidding. I'm not. I'm not. Wow. You've had quite me. She went home. She's getting ready. And we're going out. I feel so ineffectual. Is there anything I can do for you? Watch the store while I go home and change. What happened to title dictates behavior? This is my way of spitting water at life. Hey, what about Veronica? No, don't bring it up. I don't want to think about this right now. Let me enjoy this hour of bliss. I'll think about all of that later. In the meantime, nobody mentions the V words. You're a snake. In my absence, try not to sell any cigarettes to newborns. You want me to bring the VCR over here so we can watch this? I might be leaving early to go out with Caitlin, in which case you'll have to close the store tonight. All right, but you're missing out. Chicks with dicks. I'll read the book. Dante exits. A customer comes back to the counter, pets the cat. Cute cat. What's his name? Skeptic officer. Uh, cut to exterior of the convenience store. Nighttime. Jay and Silent Bob watch Dante. Watches Dante passes. A small group of burners are poised around the store door. Jay carefully writes on the large piece of paper using a thick marker. Silent Bob hands him the scissors. Jay cuts slowly the large piece of paper. Silent Bob hands him the tape. Jay snaps a few pieces off and then plasters the sign to the convenience store. It's a large word balloon. It reads, I eat cock. Once in place, he raps on the window. Randall looks out, his face adjacent to the word balloon, making it appear as if he's, say, uh, as if he's saying he eats cock. A small group laughs hysterically. Cut to uh, interior, convenience store, night. Caitlin enters, carrying an overnight bag. Randall is watching his porno. The porno is loud and lewd. Caitlin stares. Randall Graves, scourge of the video renter. Ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Asian design major herself, Caitlin Bree. You saw that article? God, isn't it awful? My mother sent that in. I take it she likes the guy. You'd think she was marrying him. What are you watching? Children's programming. What did your mom say when you told her you weren't engaged anymore? She said not to come home till graduation. Wow, you got thrown out for Dante? What can I say? He does weird things to me. Can I watch? You can hold me down. Can I join? You might be let down. I'm not like the ladies in your video. Few are. So what makes you think you can maintain a relationship with Dante this time around? A woman's intuition. Something in me says it's time to give the old boy a serious try. Wow. Hey, I was just about to order some dinner. You eat Chinese, right? Dick. Exactly. So where is he? He went home to change for the big date. God, isn't he great? No, this is great. Can I use the bathroom? There's no light there. Why aren't there any lights? Well, there are, but for some reason, they stop working at 514 every night. You're kidding. Nobody can figure it out. And the boss doesn't want to pay the electrician to fix it because the electrician owes money to the video store. Such a sordid state of affair. And I'm caught in the middle, torn between my loyalty for the boss and my desire to piss with the light on. I'll try to manage. She heads towards the back. Hey, kid. Break his heart again this time. I'll kill you. Nothing personal. You're very protective of him, Randall. You always have been. Territoriality. He was mine first. Aw, that's so cute. She kisses his forehead and walks away. The mother and small child, happy scrappy, come to the counter. Pack of cigarettes. Small child points at the TV screen. 
Cut. The exterior of the convenience store at nighttime. Randall studies the I eat cock word balloon. Dante enters. Who eats cock? Bunch of savages in this town. Hey, Caitlin's in the back. You might want to see if she's okay. She's been back there a long time. There's no lights back there. I told her that. She said she didn't need any. Why don't you join her, man? Make a little bathroom bam bam. I love your sexy talk. It's so kindergarten. Poo poo. Wee wee. Fuck you. The cooler, uh, the cooler down is heard opening. Uh, Caitlin walks lazily down the convenience store aisle. She looks very satisfied. Dante and Randall regard her curiously. She joins them, latching on to Dante's loving arm. How'd you get here so fast? I left like an hour ago. You always talk weird after you violate women. Randall and Dante stare at Caitlin, confused. Maybe the Asian design major slipped her some opium? Could be. Promise me it'll always be like that. Like what? When you just lie perfectly still and let me do everything. Um, okay. Am I missing something here? I went back there and Dante was already waiting for me. He was. It was so cool. He didn't say a word. He was just ready, you know? And we didn't kiss or talk or anything. He just sat there and let me do all the work. Cute dog. I didn't see you go back there. Dante is bewildered. And the fact that there weren't any lights made it so... Mm. God, it was so great. Yeah, right. Who was it, Randall? Was it you? I was here the whole time. You two better quit it. I'm serious. We didn't just have sex in the bathroom? No. Everyone is silent, Ben. Stop this. This isn't funny. I'm not kidding. I just got back from outside. This isn't funny, Dante. I'm not fooling around. Who went back there? No one. I feel nauseous. I swear. Still nauseous. Are you sure somebody <laughs> wasn't back there? I didn't just fuck myself. Jesus. I'm gonna be sick. You just talked to total stranger? Shut the fuck up! I can't believe I did this. I feel faint. Call the police. Why? No, don't! There's a strange man in the bathroom and he just raped Caitlin. Oh, God. She said she did all the work. Would you shut the fuck up? Who the fuck is in the bathroom? Cut to interior of the convenience store. Later, the old man's face is serene, almost happy, as he lies on the stretcher. Same old man who took the porn mag to the bathroom. Who is he? The body bag zipper is pulled closed. Dante and the coroner and Randall stand around the stretcher and the body bag. The coroner takes notes. I don't know. He just came in and asked to use the bathroom. What time was this? Um... I don't know. What time did hockey end? Around three or something. What time did we go to the funeral? I think four. Wait a second, who was working here today? Just me. I thought you just said you played hockey and went to a funeral. We did. Then who operated the store? Nobody, it was closed. With this guy locked in? Everything happened at once. I guess I forgot he was back there. I guess I forgot. Ambulance attendants join them. 
Can we take this now? Go ahead. The stretcher is wheeled out. Midway down, the body bag, uh, something protrudes, pushing the bag up. It's an erection. Randall stares at it. Was he alive when Caitlin? No, I placed the time of death at about 3.20. And how could she, you know? The body can maintain an erection after expiration, sometimes for hours. Did he have the adult magazine when he came in? No, I gave it to him. Randall in the corner, stare in disbelief. Well, he asked me for it. I can't say for certain until we get back to, until we get him back to the lab. But my guess is he was masturbating, his heart seized as he died. That's when the girl found him. Something smells like shoe polish. The weirdest thing you've ever been called in. Actually, I once had to tag a kid that broke his neck trying to put his mouth on his penis. Randall looks down anonymously. What about Caitlin? Shock trauma. She's going to need years of therapy after this. My question is, how did she come to have sex with the dead man? She thought it was me. What kind of convenience store do you run here? Uh, he exits. Dante and Randall stare at the floor. Do you think he was talking about my cousin? Cut to the exterior of the video store, nighttime. Caitlin sits in the back of the ambulance, blanket draped around her shoulder. An attendant takes her blood pressure. The doors are closed and the vehicle speeds away. Jay and Silent Bob lead again to the wall. Jay eats sugar out of a box. I knew one of those motherfuckers was going to kill somebody one day. Interior of the convenience store, nighttime. Jar of salsa is invaded by a large corn chip. <laughs> Once in the condiment, the corn chip resembles the surface of a shark fin. Fingers poke at it, bringing it to life, swimming menacingly to and fro across the jar. Da 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 Dante and Randall are on a freezer case. Randall pushes the chip around the jar of salsa. Dante stares up at the ceiling, oblivious. Salsa shark. Dante says nothing. We're going to need a bigger boat. Dante says even less than nothing. Man goes into cage. Cage goes into salsa. Sharks in the salsa. Our shark. You know, what? What's with you? You haven't said anything for like 20 minutes. What the hell is your problem? This life. This life? Why do I have this life? Have some chips, you'll feel better. I'm stuck in this pit, earning less than slave wages, working on my day off, dealing with every backward fuck on this planet. The goddamn steel shutters are locked all day. I smell like shoe polish. I've got an ex-girlfriend who's catatonic after fucking a dead guy. My present day girlfriend has sucked 36 dicks. 37. My life is in the shitter right about now. So if you don't mind, I'd like to stew a bit. You open? Yeah. Randall hops off the freezer case and steps off camera. That's all bullshit. You know what the real problem here is? I was born. Randall comes back on camera. You should shit or get off the pot. I should shit or get off the pot. Yeah, you should shit or get off the pot. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this thing you have. This inability to improve your situation in life. Fuck you. It's true. You'll sit there and blame life for dealing you a cruddy hand, never once accepting your responsibility for the way your situation is. What responsibility? All right. If you hate this job and the people and the fact that you have to come on in on your day off, then quit. As if it's that easy. It is. 
You just up and quit. There are other jobs, and they pay better money. You're bound to be qualified for at least one of them. So what's stopping you? Leave me alone. You're comfortable. This is a life of convenience for you. And any attempt to change it would shatter the pathetic microcosm you fashioned for yourself. Oh, like your life's any better. I'm satisfied with my situation for now. You don't hear me bitching. You, on the other hand, have been bitching all day. Thank you. Why don't you go back to the video store? It's the same thing with Veronica. Leave her out of this. You date Veronica because she's low maintenance and because it's convenient. Meanwhile, all you ever do is talk about Caitlin. You carry a torch for a girl you dated in high school. For God's sake, you're 22. Leave me alone. If you want Caitlin, then face Veronica. Tell her and be with Caitlin. If you want Veronica, be with Veronica. But don't pine for one and fuck the other. Man, if you weren't such a fucking coward. If I wasn't such a fucking coward. <laughs> it must be so great to be able to simplify everything the way that you do. Am I right or what? You're wrong. Things happened today, okay? Things that probably ruined my chances with Caitlin. What, the dead guy? She'll get over fucking the dead guy. Shit, my mom's been fucking a dead guy for 30 years. I call him dad. Caitlin and I can't be together. It's impossible. Melodrama coming from you seems about as natural as an oral bowel movement. What do you want me to say? Yes, I suppose some of the things you're saying may be true, but that's not the way things are. It's not going to change. Make them change. I can't, all right? Jesus, would you leave me alone? I can't make changes like that in my life. If I could, I would. I don't have the ability to risk comfortable situations on the big money and the fabulous prizes. Who are you kidding? You can so. Jesus H. Christ, no, I can't. So you'll continue being miserable all the time just because you don't have the guts to face change? My mother told me once that when I was three, my potty lid was closed. And instead of lifting it up, I chose to shit my pants. Lovely story. Point is, I'm not the kind of person that disrupts things in order to shit comfortably. Dante crosses off camera. Randall appears contemplative. Cut to interior of the convenience store in nighttime. Dante repairs ripped dollar bills, taping them back together. Jay enters with silent Bob and claps his hand. Noint, 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 smoking weed, smoking weed, doing coke, drinking beers. A pack of rocks, my good man. It's time to kick back, drink some beers, and smoke some weed. Done poisoning the youth for today? Hells yes, whatever that means. Now I'm going to head over to the Atlantic, drink some beers, get ripped, and please God get laid. Easy wider, one and a half. 179. Pay the good man. Don't you close soon? A half hour. We get off about the same time every night. We should hang out. You get high? I should start. Want to come to this party tonight? There's going to be some pussy there, man. With you? I don't think so. Listen to you. Oh, shit. Oh, I don't hang out with drug dealers. Nothing personal. Silent Bob hands weed to Jay. I work just like you. You're more of a crook than I am, dude. How do you figure? Hey, you can't roll a joint in here. Relax, brother. What I mean is you sell stuff in this store at the highest prices around. $1.79 for wraps? What's that shit? It's not my store. And these aren't my drugs. I just sell them. The difference is you exploit a weakness. What's that mean? You sell to people that can't stay away from that addiction. All right. How much is Pepsi here? $1.69 plus tax. At Food City, it's 99 cents plus tax. So? So why do you sell it for so much more? I tell you why. 
because people come here and they're like, $1.80 for soda, I should get it in Food City. But I don't feel like driving there. I'll just buy it here so I don't have to drive up there. That's exploiting a weakness too, isn't it? I can't believe you just rolled a joint in here. Hey man, what happened with that old dude? He died in the bathroom. That's fucked up. Yo, I heard he was jerking off. I don't know. I wasn't watching. Probably saw that Caitlyn chick. I know I felt like beating it when I saw her. Come here, bitch. You like this? Is this what you want? Huh? Knock it off. That used to be my girlfriend. You used to go out with her? We were going to start again, I think. Don't you already have a girlfriend? Veronica. Is she the girl who's down here all the time? She came here with uh, carrying a plate of food? Lasagna. And what, you were gonna dump her to date that Kaylin chick? Maybe. I don't know, dude. That Kaylin chick's nice, but I see that Veronica girl doing shit for you all the time. She brings you food, she rubs your back. Didn't I see her change her tire one day? I jacked the car up. All she did was loosen the nuts and put the tire on. That's Damn. what she said. She sure oh. goes out of her way. She's my girlfriend. I've had girlfriends, but all they wanted from me was weed and shit. Shit. My grandma used to say, which is better, a good plate with nothing on it? No, wait. I fucked up. She said, what's a good plate looking plate with nothing on it? Meaning? I don't know. She was senile and shit. She used to piss herself all the time. Come on, Silent Bob. Exit J. Silent Bob stands there. Silent Bob. You know, there's a million fine-looking women in the world, but they don't all bring you lasagna at work. Most of them just cheat on you. Silent Bob leaves. Dante shuts his eyes tightly and rubs the bridge of his nose with his thumb and forefinger as if in deep concentration. He suddenly snaps his eyes open. Dante, nearly surprised. Uh, He's right. I love her. Cut to interior of the video store, nighttime. Randall has a heart to heart with Veronica. So that's it. He doesn't love you anymore. He loves Caitlin. Veronica stares, dumbfounded. Take two. And he told you all of this. Pretty much, except the latent homosexuality part. That's just my theory. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Don't hold it against him. He just never got Caitlin out of his system. It's not your fault. It's Dante. I don't know. Thing one about chicks. Do you want to cry or something? I can leave. I'm not sad. Uh, no, I'm more I'm furious. furious. I'm pissed off. I feel like he's been killing time while he tries to grow the balls to tell me how he really feels, and then he can't even do it. He has his friend to do it for him. He didn't ask me to. After all that I've, do I've done for that fuck, and he wants to be with that slut, fine. He can have his slut. Um, do you think you can give me a lift home tonight? I'm going to have a word with that asshole. Veronica storms out. Wait, Veronica, I don't think... Randall stares after her. A customer stands nearby. What am I worried about? He'll probably be glad I started the ball rolling. All he ever did was complain about her anyway. I'm just looking out for his best interests. I mean, that's what a friend does, am I right? I did him a favor. Ooh, Navy SEALs. <laughs> Convenient uh, cut to interior convenience store nighttime. Dante's on the ground holding his knee. Veronica stands above him. What the fuck did you do that for? If you didn't want to go out with me anymore, why do you just say it? Instead, you pussyfoot around and see that slut behind my back. What are you talking about? Mm, you've been talking to her on the phone for weeks. It was only a few times. And then you pull that shit this morning, freaking out because I've gone down on a couple of guys? A couple? Not the one trying to patch things up with my ex sneaking around behind your back. 
And if you think that 37 dicks are a lot, then you just wait, mister. I'm going to put the hookers in Times Square to shame with all the guys I go down on. Would you let me explain? Explain what? How you were waiting until the time was right? And then you were going to dump me for her? Veronica, I, it's not like that anymore. I, I mean, it was never like really like that. Veronica kicks him in the other leg. Dante goes down, yelling in pain. You're damn, you're damn right it's not like that because I won't let it be like that. You want your slut? Fine, the slut is yours. I don't want Caitlin. You don't know what you want, but I'm not going to sit here anymore holding your hand until you figure it out. I've encouraged you to get out of this fucking dump and go back to school to take charge of your life and find direction. I even transferred so maybe you would be more inclined to go back to college if I was with you. Everyone said it was a stupid move, but I didn't care because I loved you and I didn't care. Uh, wait, mm. I was on such a roll. Everyone said it was a stupid move, but I didn't care because I loved you and wanted to see you pull yourself out of this senseless funk you've been in since that horde dumped you. Oh, so many years ago. And now you want to go back to her so she can fuck you over some more? I don't want to go back to her. Of course not. Not now. You're caught. And now you're trying to snake out of doing what you wanted to do. Well, I won't let you. I want you to follow through on this just so you can find out what a fucking idiot you are. And when she dumps you again, and she will, Dante, I promise you that when she dumps you again, I want to laugh at you right in your face. Just so you realize that what that was what you gave up our relationship for. I'm just glad Randall had the balls to tell you since you couldn't. Randall? And having him tell me that was just the weakest move ever. You're spineless. Veronica. I love you. Fuck you. Veronica exits. Dante lies on the floor alone. Cut to exterior of the video store. Night. Randall exits and locks the door behind him. Cut to interior convenience store. Night. Tight on Randall's face as he steps inside. Dante? Hands clasp around his throat and yank him out of frame. Dante throttles Randall, yeah. choking him to the ground. Randall throws his fist into Dante's midriff, throwing him back into the magazine rack. Randall jumps to his feet as Dante comes at him again. Randall tumbles into the cakes as uh, Entenmann's uh, products scatter uh, beneath and around him. He gathers a pound cake and hits Dante in the head with it, using the opportunity to scurry down the middle aisle. Dante leaps to his feet and Randall grabs the shelves, knocking aspirin over until Randall shrieking, sh shrieking sprays something in Dante's face. Dante paws at his eyes. Randall grabs Italian bread and smacks it into Dante's face as rushes him blindly. Dante chases him out of frame. Eminem scatter wildly across the empty floor as the ruckus is heard off camera. Cut to Dante and Randall later out of breath on the floor. Randall sits up against the candy rack, rubbing his neck. Dante lies on the floor, bacon held against a sort, uh, bacon held against a sort of crushed cookies, ripped open candies, broken bread, and other damaged goods. How's your eye? The swelling's not so bad, but the FDS stinks. How's your neck? It's hard to swallow. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Title of your sex tape. <laughs> They're both silent. Ben? You didn't have to choke me. Title what of your sex fuck? tape. That's Did what she said. Veronica, I was going to dump her for Caitlin. I thought I was doing you a favor. Thanks. You were saying how you couldn't initiate change yourself, so I figured I'd help you out. Jesus. Silent. And then? You still didn't have to choke me. Oh, please. I'm surprised I didn't kill you. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Randall, forget it. No, really. You made them so wrong. What don't you do, Randall? 
Sometimes it's like the only reason you come into my life is to make my life more miserable. How do you figure? What time did you get to work today? Like 10 after. You were over half an hour late. Then all you did was come over here. To talk to you. Which means the store is ostensibly closed. It's not like I'm miles away. Unless you're out renting videos at the other video stores. Uh, her method, really so we could watch it together. You get me slapped with a fine. You fight with the customers and have to patch things up. You get chased out of a funeral by violating a corpse. To top it all off, you ruin my relationship. And what's your encore? Do you anally rape my mother while pouring sugar in my gas tank? You know what the real tragedy is here? I'm not even supposed to be here today. Fuck you. Yo, fuck you, pal. Listen to you trying to pass the buck again. I'm the source of all your misery. Who closed the store to play hockey? Who closed the store to attend a wake? Who tried to win back an ex-girlfriend without even discussing how he felt with his present one? You want to blame somebody? Blame yourself. I'm not even supposed to be here today. You sound like an asshole. Whose choice was it to be here today? You did your arm. You're here today because of your own volition, my friend. You like to believe that the weight of this world rests on your shoulders, that the store would crumble if Don was bad news for you, jerk. The store would survive without you, without me either. All you do is overcompensate for having what's basically a monkey's job. You push fucking buttons. Any moron can waltz in here and do our jobs, but you're so obsessed with making it seem so much more fucking important, so much more epic than it really is. You work at a convenience store, Dante, and that's my ad. And I work in a shitty video store badly as well. That guy, Jay, has got it. He's got it right. He has no delusions about what he does. Us, we like to make ourselves seem so much better than the people that come in here. Just looking to pick up a paper or, God forbid, cigarettes. We look them as if we're so advanced. Well, if we're so fucking advanced then what are we doing working here randall gets up leaving dante to contemplate his strong words cut to dante and randall silently cleaning up backs to each other cut to dante placing a mop in the corner randall pulling on his coat i threw out the stuff got broken the floor looks clean need a ride just got one. Got one. Just pulled up. They stand in silence, and then. Do you work tomorrow? Same time. What about you? I'm calling out. I'm going to hit the hospital. See how Caitlin is. Then try to see Veronica. You want to grab something to eat tomorrow night after I get out of here? I'll call you. Let you know. All right. Good luck with Veronica. If you want, I can talk to her, you know, and explain. No, thanks. I'll take care of it. Got a lot of shit to talk about. Hell of a day. To say the least. Do you need a hug or something? Because I would have no hangups about hugging you. You know, you being a guy and all. Just don't need my ass when you do it. Get the fuck out of here already. I'm gone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Randall exits. A second later, he re-enters and tosses Dante a sheet sign. You're closed. He exits. Dante pushes the sign over from open to close. Dante climbs behind the counter, pops the register open, and starts counting the drawer out. The door is heard opening. Point of view of John. Dante counting out the register, not looking up. What, did you forget something? Oh, I'm sorry, we're closed. A gunshot blasts out. Dante flies back, his chest exploding. He stares ahead and slumps to the floor. John walks behind the counter, steps over Dante's body on the floor, and takes the money out of the register. He grabs a paper bag and jams the money in it. 
He grabs handfuls of change, shoves it in his pockets, and then quickly exits the frame. Dante continues to lie on the floor. Credits. Uh, as the credits end, the door is heard opening. A customer comes to the counter and stands there. He waits, looks around for a clerk, looks down at the aisle. Hello? Little help? No reply. He looks around again, glancing at the door to make sure nobody's coming in. He reaches behind the counter, grabs a pack of cigarettes, and then leaves. And that's Clerks, everybody. Yeah. Before I go into uh, curtain call, big, huge props. <laughs> I, said it, I said it in our little group chat, but big, huge props to Nick and Samantha for nailing those monologues. Like, so good. So mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So. Whoop, whoop. All right, so I guess I got to start bringing people back on. So as the customers, myself and Cadaver daddy -o, Hey. Yeah. Thanks our, for taking the hard one. Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Right, all puns intended. As Silent Bob and our narrator, Ramona Chase. <laughs> as Jay, Ginger Fahrenheit, getting to fulfill a dream tonight. Yo, get some pussy tonight! <laughs> As Mrs. Asian design major herself, Caitlin Bree, Kelsey. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. As the original Real Housewife of New Jersey, Veronica, Miss Samantha Madison. Woo! Constitution horses. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that was missing. Yes. Was missing. Yes. As the scourge of the video rent, rent, rental, Randall, Mr. Nick Aver. Woo! I thank you. I thank you. And as our dead, as yeah, we did the full script, including the alternate ending where Dante dies. Uh, Patrick, Patrick McMahon. I hope I didn't mess too much up. No, you were great. <laughs> you did great. Like, you did great. Was, I feel like all of us messed something up. It's fine. Oh yeah, that's true. Between, between, between Except for me, I was perfect. You were all by. <laughs> Says the bitch who missed highlighting half of my lines. <laughs> Calm down. You can do it yourself, girl. <laughs> so with that in mind, y'all, we will see you in a couple of weeks for our next one, which is Devil Wears Prada. And Ooh. we've got a couple of ideas Ooh. for later things that you'll hear. So have a great night. So people can donate money, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Thanks, yes. Donating Thanks money Mom. To. I was Ready? getting there. <laughs> Were you getting there? there? Seems like you're about to hit leave meeting. She, she was she was not going getting there at all. Uh -oh. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't, but Girl, she forgetful. It's fine. We were rooting for you. We were all rooting we for you. We were all for you. We want to be quoting Tyra Banks at this stage of the game. Don't start with me with Tyra Banks, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sam and I had the talk already. Yes. If you still want to donate to Sex Positive St. Louis, the link is in the Facebook video. I'm going to put another thing up on my Instagram and Twitter but give them all your money. So, all right. See you next time, y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.